and welcome to the Computer Game Show. My name's David Turner and I'm here with Matt Murray. Hello. I'm also here with James Farley. Hello. Sean Bell is also on the podcast. You're right. You're all right. How's it going? Good, thanks. Yeah, I'm all right. Good. Um, we've. I mean, let's before we get started, we should probably address something that um, I'm sure. Uh, well, I don't know if anyone really cares, but um, there's a bit of a weird situation at the moment. We don't know if we're on Dash Radio anymore, and uh, <laughs> I thought I'd just let you know because this has just been a bizarre series of events. <laughs> Um, outside, it's, it's been an odd week. Um, so basically, the, the whole thing with Dash Radio is that um, they don't pay us. Uh, they approached us and said, hey, um, we've got a gaming channel and we'd love to pay, play your podcast out. Uh, we've got this many listeners, we're blah, blah, blah. Um, and we'd love you to be a part of our gaming, sh- uh, our gaming channel. And um, we spoke about it and we said, look, we put this podcast out for free anyway. So, you know, it would have been nice to have been paid, but at the end of the day, it's fine. The, the more people that hear it and the, in the various different ways across the internet, the better, I think. So we said, yeah, fine. Um, and it was, it went well for about six months, I think, uh, until we got an email saying, right, okay, your, your show's over two hours. Can you cut it down to two hours and try and keep your show under two hours? And I replied and said, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, I've even, <laughs> your shows are creeping over the two hour mark. I mean, this is after you sent a three and a half hour <laughs> <laughs> game of the year or E3 one. Well, yeah, yeah, they're just creeping over, aren't they? But my point is this, right? You, you, you're getting our podcast for free to put out on your channel, and I, I don't feel bitter about that. I'm quite happy that it's a new way for people to listen. I'm not going to start changing the show so that we can do this. So, um, no. So I said, look, if that means we can't be on uh, Dash Radio anymore, then then fine. Okay, that's the way it's got to be. Uh, but there's no way I'm changing the sort of length of the show or, or keep, even keeping that in the back of my mind mm. while we're recording. I don't, I don't want to have to do that. So they replied saying, no problem, we'll deal with it our end. Don't, don't worry, it's not an issue. Uh, they then sent that email about four times over the next like <laughs> few months saying, guys, can you keep it under two hours? No, guys, you've done I'm it again. With, <laughs> you sent the done, Game of the Year episode in. You've done that thing again <laughs> that you said you were going to keep doing. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we said, no, we, we're not, uh, we've been through this. We're not going to do it. And then the last week we got um, an email saying, Okay, right, just to let you know, we're going to play last week's show again. Um, oh, no, that was it. During one of these emails, they said, okay, if you can't keep it to two hours, can you send a separate edited version that's two hours long? And I said, no. I like yes, I'm, I'll definitely do I, I that. I put too much time into this as it is. Right? I'm not going to do a second edit that's cut down to two hours. And not only that, what do you cut out? It's all gleam. It's all <laughs> gleam. Right? It's not, it's not happening. Um, so they said, okay, no worries, you know, as, as they usually do. Um, and then last week we got an email saying, right, we're, we're playing last week's show. We're not playing this week's show because it's, it's too long. Um, and well, you know, we've, uh, we need to keep the schedule. I said, okay, fine. No problem. Uh, and then they sent an all sort of personnel email, um, including us saying, right, here's how it's going to go down from now on. If you've got a podcast that's over two hours long, don't bother sending it in. Um, and we, you know, so I just thought, did you know what was weird? I've given them about four or five opportunities to say, okay, fair enough, mate. No worries. We'll, we'll park companies and, and that'll be fine. Yeah. But instead we're in this weird limbo now <laughs> where technically we're on dash radio, but I don't think one of our shows is ever going to be played on it again. Like, <laughs> well, you, well, you know, what was really weird. Like, are they just going to keep playing last week's show now forever? Like, that would be that amazing. Gonna, that's Constantly, that's like, frozen well, the house, in time. Like, they haven't even got the argument, because was, it was the week before last. I mean, that's a shame. <laughs> yeah, Every just week, just, just like, shouting about <laughs> Detroit. <laughs> it, was, it was a two-and-a-half-hour podcast last week. If I'd have cut the argument out, of the show and send that in and then we, with the whole show would be talking about this argument or like the, the whole show would have been okay coming up is the argument here we go and uh if you're back with us uh, yeah, was, uh if you've skipped the like uh, it's just it's just very odd so i mean i don't know uh i mean it's no point in saying if you listen to us on dash radio sorry um, because this isn't going to be played on dash radio this episode i'm pretty sure of it um but i mean if you've 
if you were listening to us on there and then you found us uh, on on the podcast feed because you've heard last week's show eight times now, um, then this is the this is the reason why we're not been on there, and uh, this is the reason why we're probably never going to be on there again. So make sure you subscribe on iTunes or or, or Podbean or whatever whatever service you use because I don't know what the fuck's going on. Such a weird, <laughs> such a weird like back and forth. It's been bizarre, and I mean as I said giving you this content for free to play out on your channel, you know, quite happy for you to say, look, it's not worth the aggro, don't bother coming on our show. And, and then demanding us to keep under certain uh, time limits. It's not happening. It's not happening. So, um... Just do a second edit, Dave. Dave. Just do a second edit, you lazy fuck. <laughs> it's, I'm like, it's like Sorry. they've come at it from this position of just being like, just tell them what we need. If they don't like it, they can leave. But we're just like, well, we don't really care all that much like it's not <laughs> it's, you know like, I mean? it's like it's a like timeshare isn't it yeah. you're free to leave at any time okay then goodbye well you shouldn't know <laughs> <laughs> it's just bizarre um yeah so an odd an odd uh series of events for the computer game show but i don't know i don't know what's what what the deal is the fact of the matter is if they sent us an email saying hey we want to keep playing your show then fine or, or at least, if you're getting this free content, edit it yourself. I'm yeah. not against that. No, I, Dave, got a I think they do that. love the show. I think they love the week before's show so much. They're just insisting now <laughs> that's all they're going to play. It's a, it's a <laughs> they just sent you an email gonna... like, guys, you are not going to top this. So yeah, we're just, just going to keep <laughs> We're going to freeze one. it. There's a I'm time done. capsule. That's it. That's it that, that one episode <laughs> that they keep playing out, wasn't that the one without James? Maybe they just hate James so much <laughs> that they're like, look, We'll just keep playing this one. Next time James isn't in, it will be back on. We'll be back on. Um, yeah, sorry, James. That seemed to offend it. Sorry, offend I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm with them. I'd be quite happy to keep this other two hours, but, you know. It's, it's not happening, James. This one's going to be four hours long now because fuck you. Right, mm. should we get on to the feedback from last week's show? <laughs> Was there any, Matt? They all loved it, did they? It's quite a week. <laughs> not a lot happened. Um, obviously, on last week's show... Uh, I'll get into the non-Detroit feedback because there's not much there. Uh, last week, James <laughs> um, had some insults for me, one of which was Mr. T-shirts. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mike Petit, 89. Uh, can we please get Matt Murray a TCGS T-shirt with Mr. T-shirts on it? Uh, and also, Johnny Bullwant wants me to change my Twitter handle to at Mr. T-shirts. <laughs> oh, Matt will never do that because he sees his own name, which is his Twitter handle, as a brand, so there's no way he's changing that. No, I'd be stupid to, to change t-shirt. that. Someone else would jump on it, and it'll be oh, stupid. Yeah, me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that'd be brilliant. <laughs> uh, listenership would go right down there. Cause I, like, I'm, I'm not following Matt Murray. What would? And then yeah, it would just it would just, it would just kill, kill a Twitter account, Sean. It's not worth it. That's true. Dave, what? I thought you went. Beep. No, no, I think I did. That's why I'm going. Okay. Um, Orkney is <laughs> half an hour into this week's episode of the Computer Game Show. I've been full on Gervais style laughing. It's a little thing, so especially JC Farley and his excellent comeback. Now, someone said comeback. They mispronounced it on the show. It, they said comeback. And I, I've had the word comeback in my head about 50 times this week. It's just I so must sat- admit, I've been saying it around the it's house. It's so a lot. satisfying to say comeback. <laughs> it, it is. is. I don't know why. Who said that? Because I don't even know who said that. I, it was I me. Know I said it. Was yeah. it you? I okay. said it. Yeah, you. You. <laughs> you gave one of the weakest comebacks I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> it was coming like something like, "Well, maybe you are the one that is wrong." Or something like that. <laughs> like, I just went, "Oh, they, that, that was a weak comeback." <laughs> I don't know what happened. My brain melted for a second uh, with hilarious consequences. Okay. Um, then we have some moving on. We got to keep this under about, two hours about Detroit. Yeah, so we um, I'll go for the feedback in, in a moment. We 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 had a poll. Uh, Dave did the poll like he said he would last week. Uh, the poll being who won the debate was it Matt or James? We had three hundred eighty two votes over those three days. I think it was, and unsurprisingly, James uh, trounced me. The final results. Oh, no, no, no. Also, how many of these votes were Russian bots, Matt? <laughs> right. Okay. Also, we should probably explain it. It was over the Detroit argument. I, I, all it was was I who that. won that debate. Did I you, literally just explain that. Didn't really sound like it. It's a like brushed over that bit. So it was quite important. I, I asked everyone to just ignore what you thought of David Cage and what you thought of the game <laughs> Detroit, whether you played it or not. Lots of people haven't played it and they've still got a fucking opinion. Um, 
and and vote on who won that debate. And yeah, I mean, I, I guess it was kind of closer than I thought it would be. I thought James was going to trounce him, Matt, to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah. Yeah, so did I, um, but then, I'm then, then there was shenanigans went on. Didn't well, we'll come into so. shenanigans in a moment. So the final results, yeah, 382 votes. Uh, I got a lowly 37%. Uh, James with 63%. That actually leaves. Are p- you happy with 37? That's like more than one in four. So uh, I mean, that's pretty good going. Yeah. How yeah. many people do you work with, Matt? How many people? <laughs> well, we'll, we'll we'll get onto that. That, 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 that actually negatively three. affected my stats, but anyway, we'll come on to that. Okay, but before <laughs> any of this starts, the biggest bit of fear I've got to myself, and I can't believe no one else, no one else picked us up right. I kept saying the word Ferris wheel. Afterwards, I'm like, hang on, it wasn't. I actually meant carousel slash merry go round. There wasn't actually <laughs> a Ferris wheel. Again. No one, n- none of you guys, none of the listeners, no one picked up like that. Ferris wheel yeah, didn't even make sense. Right, I was yeah. like saying Ferris wheel in their tweets, in their Discord messages. I just like you know, brainwashed a whole you know a whole listenership. But yeah, <laughs> it's not a Ferris wheel. It was definitely a carousel slash merry go round. Uh, and it's weird because it was such a memorable scene as well. You'd thought that people would have <laughs> remembered all of that. Well, it invokes it's not only one memorable scene, James. It was oh, yeah, two. It was <laughs> just like the last of us, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh god, that was still that fucks me off. But we'll come on to that. Thomas at Llamafly forty two. Regarding the Detroit, ex- uh, regarding the Detroit exchange, I say exchange because Matt didn't actually debate anything. I must admit that on reflection, I feel some sympathy from Matt's perspective. Sometimes you just have to suspend belief, switch off your critical radar, and just enjoy something for what it is: popcorn entertainment. Maybe it's bad Matt popcorn entertainment. May, may, I'll finish. <laughs> Maybe Matt doesn't have a critical radar or just likes any old shit, but at least he can enjoy himself. Actually, he said guff. I, you know, whatever. He can enjoy himself. Uh, poor Matt. By uh, po- oh, fucking hell, what's wrong with me? Poor James. By contrast, seems unable to take a back seat in this way, unable to overlook flaws and inconsistencies unwilling to switch off that critical mind unless of course we're talking about yakuza or shenmue in which case any amount of crap design is overlooked and lauded as part of eastern design philosophy <laughs> bullshit <laughs> it, uh, well we'll come to that yeah, we'll come to that, we'll come to in that the later. End, maybe none of this matters because the two were t- simply talking about two different things james was exploring the critical worth of detroit while matt was simply talking about whether he had good time or not regardless it was another great bit of podcasting hilarious thank uh, keep up the great work uh, Tom Pollard uh, was a similar email. Really enjoyed the show last week. The build-up to the debate was actually rather intense. Regarding the debate itself, uh, even though it was fun and hilarious, it wasn't really a debate. Debates need to be objective, not subjective. Uh, every point James made was evidenced by reference to the game. Every point Matt made was based in emotion, therefore doesn't really count in the debate. Matt's response to most of James's criticism was actually to agree with James's points, but then say he still enjoyed it. That's perfectly cool for Matt to feel like that, but that isn't a debate. In terms of the Twitter poll on who won the debate, it was clearly James. Matt grew of all James' negative points without providing any alternatives that were objective. <laughs> it was a really good show, I don't though. I not necessarily agree with that. I mean, y- you put up a brick wall there, Matt, by just saying, well, I liked it, I liked it. <laughs> but then James yeah. didn't count, like, James didn't counter that. He but you can't, t- you can't you counter can. that. How? What? How but do you counter saying, it? By saying, what, like, saying, Matt, we're having a... Like, bring up the fact that it's a debate and we're talking about specific elements of the game. I mean, the only the only thing that Instead, I Instead, really you just went, regret... Matt, I can't deal with this! And then fucked it off. It was like, but no, I... bring that up. The only bring thing up. that I really regret not bringing up was the fact that Matt said that he'd score it 8 out of 10, despite the fact that he then said all these things that were terrible and wrong about it. <laughs> and I should have brought that yeah, up. Yeah, but I, a, game, I oh, God, that. A, a game can have issues and you can still enjoy it. Like anything, like lots of films have bad uh, have, have issues, but you can overall, we can enjoy experience. I, I, I don't yeah, discount... Of course you can. There's nothing wrong with that. But then you can also say that it's not a very good game. Well, I mean, but and but, also not but not I, to say that I've got an agenda talking about it, and that it's you know that it's just because I hate David Cage, whereas it's not. It's just that it's not a very good game. Well, yeah, but 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 I, I thought it was a good game, and so uh, we're here <laughs> stuck here again, aren't we? Even though you agreed to all the things that were wrong with it, I agree it's not a perfect game. But did I have fun? <laughs> yes. Would I recommend it? Yes. <laughs> Ben Humphreys, okay. from all the talk surrounding last week's podcast, I was expecting a struggle. Two men fighting in the desert as a heat wearing them down, cuts and bruises, trembling knees as they keep charging each other, knowing that they were nearing the event horizon of their sanity and energy. Um, instead, of listen to a mosquito being slapped around, a pigeon being shooed away from someone eating a steak on a park bench, a steak bench, <laughs> and a teacher <laughs> taking away a silly child's party. A child's silly party. One of the best, <laughs> moments- <laughs> oh, <fuck's sake. laughs> the best moments of the show 
Uh, however, uh, if you do become famous comedians, it's not going to happen. In your 20th anniversary reunion show, everyone will be shouting, do the Matt versus James sketch. Keep it up. Uh, also, <laughs> at PS, around three years ago, Sean, he recommended a Chippy and Whitby, and you seem to very much enjoy it. How was that, Sean? Uh, I'm do trying to think. Do you remember Ben Humphrey's recommendation of a Chippy and Whitby three I years ago? I do remember ago. someone recommending a Chippy and Whitby, and we went, and it was very good. Yeah. There, there, there you go. Um, let's go on to James. What did you give Detroit? Um, did I review it? I did review it, didn't I? No, I yes. didn't review it. No, I didn't review it. It was because I bought it for, the, for the, the fact that I was um, like streaming it. I didn't feel that I could comfortably like review oh, that's it. Right, that's <laughs> right. so it was, yeah. well, what would but you give you it? You did come on this show and say that that you thought I think it, was a, it wasn't a bad game. I said it was it a was... six out of ten. I think was what was what I gave it. Right, okay. That sounds fine. I just find it weird, like, because on the show you were, like, going, it's not a bad game, it's just, you yeah, know, it's, it's a bit boring. tedious or whatever, but then that's, ever that's since the point, you've yeah. been like, it's fucking shit! Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's just, I was just trying to, I was just countering some of Matt's just, I don't know, just fantasy, like, about, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's so just... we come, but we we counteracting it with truth or, like, your actual opinion. Yeah, with truth, as I backed up all those points, Matt, <laughs> rather than just saying I didn't like it and, and I couldn't, I, I, and then I've not saying admit, anything like, else. I, I mean, I, I was terrible last week. I'm I'm shit at debating. I had nothing really to back up my point. All I can say, and I know I've repeated it, is I enjoyed it, and I, I I have nothing else to say about it. You know, there were bad points. Let's get fucking on to the tweets. This is mental. Athena <laughs> Allen, <laughs> Matt May, what the fuck are you on about? Honestly, uh, SM uh, SMW. Can we please have a referee every week? Uh, obviously, Sean and and Dave last week were like the referees, uh, mediators in the middle. Uh, although Sean tried to pipe in with some with some, <laughs> with some low blows. Enjoyed a more sensible debate with a good balance of anger and discussion without getting trapped in a loop. Um, Thomas at Lama Fluff again uh, the joyful clash between the anal analyst who cannot let things go that's James and the Peter Pan suspend of disbelief <laughs> Matt it's a pinnacle <laughs> podcast and I'll listen to it many many times maybe like every single day from now on um, some people defending me um, oh no it, this isn't one of them though Fergal Mangan <laughs> No, no, no one did. I know what you mean, Matt. I've just put the subtitle Matt's Defenders and then there is nothing underneath. (laughs) Just Um, Fergal Mangan at Trolley Bay on Twitter. I know what you mean, Matt Murray. There was a scene in American Pie the Wedding where one poorly written character spoke awful dialogue to another poorly written character and it reminded me of the Godfather scene where two people spoke to each other. I mean, (laughs) uh, okay, I'm gonna this is the last time I'm gonna mention this. I don't see how you can't see that there's a carousel in one game and a carousel in another and that doesn't remind you of the same scene <laughs> I go I, I, at this point I think you guys are trolling me we'll go on James John, you're... I've got nothing to say to it I've already gone over this so many times and it's just insane how are they how are they not similar because there's both the same fucking thing in the scene <laughs> <laughs> and I forget all of the things leading up to it and where they were Oh, okay, I've oh, got forget, to forget, forget all the context. Yeah, yeah forget all of that. <laughs> but this, I just, oh, it's so. It's, <laughs> Matt, you are walking into a trap here. It's so I mean, you are literally saying they're similar scenes because they've got the same fairground ride in them. Like, yeah, it's, that's, that's literally what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not that doesn't make them similar scenes then does it <laughs> it makes them similar that they've both got a ferris wheel in it um John Car- Gary Disco a carousel I, it's a carousel man that was a gag <laughs> okay John Gar- Gary Disco oh. just listen to the James versus Matt Detroit debate really enjoyed that I can't wait for Matt to present his side of the argument um, I thought that was a very funny tweet yeah. until he, he's, he's repeated the joke again later yeah. in the week and I mean <laughs> I, that was the first time didn't like the sequel. Joshua Garrity at Convoy Hunter. James clearly won. He was the only one actually formed an argument. I agree. Matt was just kept Matt just kept trying to fruitlessly undermine James and forgetting to bolster his own points. Claiming someone's opinion is a result is a result of agenda is piss weak stuff, Matt. Come on. But then James, you did you failed to call him out on that properly. Yeah, you no, failed to done. you failed to go better. into why technically it is wrong to do what he was doing. Mm. That that was your biggest flaw in a, in a debate class, mate. You <laughs> all, all right? You might have won, but I mean, I'll, I'll admit I was blindsided by Matt just coming in with the Trump defense. I I really was expecting more Fuck than that. You were comparing him to I some the game. stuff. Oh yeah, I did say well, you you brought Brexit and stuff into it. Anyway. We had some feedback, and then came the afternoon of the 24th of August, 2018. Um, 
I was looking at the vote numbers, and I was, I was never going to win anyway because it's James, and everyone loves James, and it's me, and you know, everyone, everyone hates me. Um, but <laughs> anyway, this was like you know, three, uh, two or three. Maybe actually, this might be like the day of the, the poll. Whatever. At that point, it was thirty-eight percent to me and sixty-two to James. I was like, well, so something's going to happen. So I thought, you know, there's, well, I've got a few listeners in the office at work. I thought, what I'll do is, I will maybe I'll mention it as a poll. I mentioned it as a poll online, <laughs> and I posted it in like, the company Slack channel. I was like, yo, if any, you know, you don't even have to, don't, it's too boring to get involved in the, you know, what, what's behind this. But basically, there's a poll here. I would really it's appreciate like, a vote for my name. It's like, forget about the details, like I did with the game, and just vote for me. <laughs> I wasn't going to suddenly <laughs> send, like, a marketing agency, oh, but here's a massive argument I had about this, this, this Detroit game. I was just like, my name's in it. You guys like me. You guys are my friends. Here is a poll. <laughs> and then. One of them, um, Ad- <laughs> this guy called Adam. I, I love, I love Adam. He's great. He's a great anime, a great author. He doesn't listen to the podcast. <laughs> I don't believe that doesn't anymore. I don't the believe podcast, that. that and he basically mugged me off. So he he tweeted. At, he replied to like the computer game pod poll. Hello, TCGS fans and David Turner. So he obviously found you. I work with Matt. He has just asked the whole department to vote for him in the poll without explaining what it's about. Shameful. This poll is a lie. Hashtag fake news. Uh, that that brought on <laughs> it is Trump. That that brought on some <laughs> some of some other replies. Um, Mike Petit eighty nine. I'm booking a ticket to Birmingham just to come and boo you. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Chris O'Regan uh, he mentions it mentions Adam uh, can you advise us on Matt Murray's plate strategy does he eat everything on his plate during lunch or does he watch someone else on YouTube eat the same food and only eat half his own lunch <laughs> I like that um, T- uh, TC Jess fans on Twitter said that basically it might have swayed the vote away from voting for me I don't think that's going to happen uh, yeah so it all went drastically downhill at that point but then, but then you know the end result sort of ended up where, was, where we were pre Pre uh, pre message in the Slack channel. So, what do you mean? Well, because it it, it was around thirty eight percent. Then it went to like thirty six percent, and James James increased his leads, and then it went back to basically sort of oh, yeah, ha- yeah, how yeah, it yeah. ended yeah, up. Yeah, so yeah, you got back to yeah. The... Basically, oh, right, okay. I don't have an argument. A lot of people were not happy about me. Um, so some people were. And Lee at Lee the night. Matt's Detroit point was oddly the one that indicates we are all human. We all like stuff that is eternally flawed, like fags, booze, and we love our shit TV for sure. Um and obviously, I, 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 Tom Durbin. I'm mostly with Matt. Sometimes things just resonate with us. And as someone who deeply loves a number of critically derided films, I can relate. His discussion of the Ferris wheel scene. I've got, I've got another one there. His discussion of the Ferris <laughs> wheel scene was admirable. That said, the, the idea that James can't judge the game is bollocks. Um, and we end with um. Uh, uh, what about the themes? You, you've missed that one. Uh, I had it. I oh yeah. Well. I, Mass defense was embarrassing. It's clear he knows at this point he's wrong, and his praise doesn't hold up under scrutiny. James demolished him. Yeah. <laughs> demolished him. Um, <laughs> solvent at solvent underscore image. James destroyed Matt in this. He couldn't even defend it. At Bortang, Bortang's such a great. That's almost as good as comeback. But Bortang. <laughs> so which is a stranger narrative? Matt enjoying a game which missed his mark at his attempted pinnacle, or James playing completing a game which he clearly was going to hate in the gate. I, mean, I wasn't I'll clearly going to hate it, yeah. but you know, okay, I I'll, didn't I'll hate it. Anyway, it was boring. Oh come of... on! Ever since you you got to drop that now. Yeah, because come on, you yeah, can't say, up, oh, I you... didn't. I didn't hate it because you have gone for it like big I, time. I didn't hate it like I hated Beyond Two Souls. I, I'd admit that. <laughs> it, it was, uh, what would you score Beyond Two Souls? That's like a three or something. That it's one of the worst games I've ever played. It's terrible, Matt. I mean, I played it's a bad that. game. I, I, I loved it. Um, so I'm going to end with uh, <laughs> at David Badil on Twitter, uh, not the actual David Badil. Uh, James was jabbing away. <laughs> David Badil will get involved. <laughs> <Imagine that. laughs> David Badil was like, someone just sent me this. Frank Skinner uh, just sent yeah. me this. <laughs> and then in brackets, not the Frank Skinner. <laughs> <laughs> Um, James was jabbing away but never landed a decent punch Matt could just keep saying it was just his opinion and James never got past that defence final summing up just centred on James asking why he can't have an opinion I think it's James on points but overall a disappointing performance I'd agree with that yeah I, I, mean, I mean I wasn't happy with my performance either but you know yeah so. I, I, I mean I did terrible but it's, it's over did now did you vote Sean? what? did you vote? Uh, yeah yeah I vote for James <laughs> Oh, you're supposed to keep it quiet. <laughs> what? Why? You're supposed to keep... We said last week. Oh, yeah, shit, we, we did do it. So it's like the actual, actual general election. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've totally given it away. Right, yeah. I mean, you've <laughs> lost your... I mean, to be fair... You could have potentially uh, used I that think, in the future. I think from comments, because I couldn't help myself chipping in last week, I thought it was pretty clear. Anyway. 
Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm keeping my cards to my chest, Ooh, mate. I I wonder. You know. Ooh. So much I might need that. Mm. So much mystery. Well, you don't know. You genuinely don't. Like, 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 I'm I'm not explaining. Yeah. I'm not explaining. Anyway, thank um, you everyone for voting. Um, I'll do better on the ne- next debate. Uh, that's it for feedback. We had a lot yeah. of feedback around that. There's, there's tons of messages on the Discord and all sorts, but I just picked out some of them. If you want to leave us uh, some feedback or question or whatever you've got on this episode or anything else we've done, it's at Computer Game Pod on Twitter or the Computer Game Show at gmail.com. Before we end this, I just want to remind you we're doing a live podcast at EGX on 22nd of September, uh, 5 till 7 on Saturday. We're also going to have a meet afterwards in a pub in Birmingham called the Wellington Real Ale Pub. It's on Bennett's Hill. We're going to meet at like half seven or eight or whatever. Just get there after the after the um, after the the live podcast. We'll have a few beers or soft drinks, whatever you want. Have a chat. Just you know, that's it, really. So we're going to meet up after the show. That's about it. Cool. All right. So is that that's it for feedback? Is it? Yeah. Good news. 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 Okay. The news for this week. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, so Miyamoto has warned the games industry not to get too greedy. Um, this was yeah, yeah. This, over this week. So Come he on, said. Mate. So the whole thing of this is he said that Nintendo are looking at other ways to charge people for games that isn't free to play. That isn't sixty they, quid. Yeah, well, they no, because they, they they just don't want to go the free to play model, and they. He's called in like this interview that um, Bloomberg covered this, but they said he focused on this idea that the industry should deliver titles at fixed prices without overcharging like players. Mm-hmm. And he said that this was overall this is like a more sustainable long term business model. And this is the quote: He said, "We're lucky to have such a giant market. So our thinking is, if we can deliver games at reasonable prices to as many people as possible, we will see big profits." So this is the yeah. So it's basically it's, it's weird because like uh, Animal Crossing Pocket Camp has been really criticised for this because it really mm. focuses on like profiteering like in a big way with the yeah. free-to-play stuff, but now they're saying that they're not going to pursue this any further. I know. What do you think? I mean, um, I, I mean... Uh, go on. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised he's not aware of the fact that they're seen as quite an expensive company. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, like, when it comes to gaming, you know, they're, they're, the price of their games are still quite high, especially like making you rebuy old games and stuff like that. I'm surprised he's not aware that saying, hey guys, can we all stop getting greedy wouldn't be seen as, hold on a minute. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) That's the natural response. The the other thing though that he said with this is he said that like the games, game developers should learn from the music industry and that like how the music industry is still recovering from like MP3 file sharing and subscription models could have a bigger role in the future but the overall culture should be that you pay for good software like if something is good then you should be paying that amount of money like if you look at something like mario odyssey or like zelda or whatever do you think that's overpriced dave because i don't i think no that's no no a god prime price for not, that. no 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 so he didn't actually say that uh, let's not get greedy did it was no, that, did. Uh, that well that that was the that's what bloomberg of of like you know sort of paraphrased it as being as in like you know yeah yeah i mean so it it sounds like the headline that was doing the rounds on the internet is is kind of maybe not quite the point that he was making Mm. um Mm -hmm. i mean i uh, think that what struck me about this was that like don't most people agree that like free to play has been figured out now like there are plenty of free to play games that don't piss people off anymore well there's that and there's the fact that you know i mean yeah Free to play is like, you know, I mean, you know what you're getting, and that's mm. you know, uh, 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 not not necessarily like what free to play is. Mm. Um, uh, obviously, James, you've you've always hated free to play. Free to play. Free to play. I think it's terrible. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. So, but but it, I mean, it's clearly working. So, yeah. um, yeah, I don't quite understand his point. See, I th- I think there's room for both here. I mean, I I hate free to play, and I won't. I don't get involved. I don't play games if they're free to play. Really. And but, no, but did, you know, didn't you play Fortnite? No, you said you tried a bit of Fortnite, didn't you? I, yeah, I played it for like you know, like ten minutes or whatever. Yeah, but, but it doesn't not... necessarily think that that's yeah. I mean, that doesn't reflect the fact that whether he likes free to play or not. I mean, James has always been very, very negative about free to play. Yeah, um, I've found on occasion I can play a free to play game and quite quite enjoy it, but um, on the whole, I tend to stick away just because my own 
head is telling me that it's constantly trying to rip me off. You mm. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, that's the problem I have with it, is because I just feel that the way that free-to-play games are designed, they're designed to be like old arcade games were, in the sense of like they yeah. want you to keep plumping money in. And that's why I don't like it, because I just I don't... See, I, I see Matt's point, though. Fortnite yeah. is very different to that, though. Fortnite yeah. is not like that at all, and it, it it's massively successful. So, but that, um, that's on a subscription model, though, isn't it? Kind of. Don't no. they have like season passes? Yeah, or something? yeah. You have. The, you, the, you can you, buy them. You pay. It's a one-off payment. It's not a subscription. It's a one-off payment. Um, and you play. You it basically just gives you access. That you will still be playing with people that are not mm-hmm. um uh, paying for a season pass. You just get nice shiny new costumes and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, extra challenges to do. And um, the the you know, the you can even if you play it enough within a season, you can earn enough credits to buy the next season yeah, with just in game credits. I mean, I, I only got as far as like week four, and I, I put sort of put it down because I had other games to play. But I've already got enough like V bucks now t- to pay for the next season pass for season six. So you don't even have to have it that much. I mean, I only done like weeks four out of like the twelve weeks or whatever, however long it is. So yeah, I don't mind free to play games if you like that. I mean, and I'll, I'll happily pay that. Ten or you know, yeah, whatever. but and on the on the on the flip side, I mean, there's people that don't mind free to play games as they are that we don't like, you know, where yeah. it does sort of nickel and dime you, and um, you know, sometimes it is people it, people don't seem to have a problem with it. So uh, although you know, although they're not you too say out that, us, you say that, but then there's the whole thing with um, Star Wars Battlefront, wasn't it? I mean, people had a massive problem with oh, that. Yeah, well, that's I what mean, I mean. Like, I yeah, think yeah, basically things have got so bad that now everyone. Like they've had a warning that like a fucking Star Wars shoot 'em up can fail due to badly implemented free to play stuff. So well, I said it wasn't even, yeah, it wasn't even free to play. There was it because you did have to pay for the fucking game. It's the but loot crates, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think like that's been a bit of a warning to everyone else. Like, could you imagine being one of the devs that worked on Battlefront Two and then seeing that? Fucking joking, isn't it? Like, yeah, all, no, no, all right, Miyamoto. Like, we, we we don't need you to tell us yeah, this. Yeah. We've worked this out ourselves. <laughs> like, it's just, guys, I think maybe you should stop being great. Yeah, we know. She, she, she it's like, yeah, the, the fucking <laughs> wall of death threats we've got. Uh, a yeah. testament to that. Thanks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sure. oh, is that where we've gone wrong? <laughs> the Mario man told us that that's where we've gone wrong. <laughs> Fuck. Go quick. Change everything. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, okay, fine. If anyone else had said this on stage, I don't think it would have been made a big deal of, right? Mm, probably. I mean, it is significant because anything Shigeru Miyamoto says is heightened, but I, I, yeah. can't, I can't understand why he's even getting involved. To be honest <laughs> with you. Well, I think it's probably partly because, because this follows on to the next story, because he's also been talking about Super Mario Run and like how he regretted a lot of design decisions they made with that. And one of the design decisions that he, they regretted with that was the was the cost, like the fixed mm. cost. I mean, it's it's really weird because he said that he felt that the fixed cost was a mistake for for Mario Run. But, but he then, was so adamant about that, wasn't he, at the time, just yeah. before launch? Yeah, yeah. Um, but this, he really held firm with that. I mean, this was a, a keynote speech that he did at the Computer Entertainment Developers Conference in Japan, and he so he said there was two things two big things he wasn't happy with one was the difficulty which he felt was too high and that it spiked too quickly like as in it was maybe a bit easier and then it got too difficult too quickly and that's why they introduced that remix mode to try and fix it um because they felt the difficulty wasn't right and then the fixed cost it's um it's but it's kind of odd because i mean out of all the ones they've released that's the one that's done the least well isn't it like in like financially i'd imagine yeah yeah i think so like fire emblem heroes done a massive amount and yeah. Animal Crossing is still doing well. So it'll be interesting to see what they do because Mario Kart's next, isn't it? That's supposed to be coming out oh, is it? this year. God, yeah. Yeah. Well, they were saying, yeah, at the end of the year, weren't they, at Shit. one point? But we've but not heard anything about it since. So. It's a bit like their online service. You just hear nothing. You know, <laughs> it'll probably just come out suddenly. You know, I don't yeah. know. And then you've got it's to weird. pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Dave, did you, how long did you play Super Mario Run for? Did you I, play- played it for I played it solid, solidly for about a month. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I, it just got to a point where it was one of those situations where it felt like the toad run was screwing me a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, that could just all be in my head, obviously. But it, it got to the point where I was just kind of like, okay, this is the one that I lose and this is the one that I win. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's like when you play slot machines mm. in video games as a mini game um, and you sit there and you go, 
okay, well, if I know video games, then this one's the winner. And then ding, 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 it wins. And <laughs> you're like, right, okay, well, I'm not going to win now, am I? Because I've just won. So this isn't it. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. you mm-hmm. feel that you can, that there's stuff going on under the hood that, that you can kind of see through. Um, and and that's kind of when I stopped playing, to be honest. I feel with like you. I definitely Mate, got my f- money's worth. I mean, it's eight quid, and I, I mean, arguably, it wasn't the fixed fixed cost that was the issue. I think it's probably that the actual cost itself. I mean, if that was mm. four ninety nine or two ninety nine, maybe it'd be less of a. I mean, eight quid is that's a lot for an iPhone. Uh, for, for a smartphone game. Yeah, but they still sold a fuck ton, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and, and at the time, I mean, I thought it's expensive, but it's Mario. And I, I played it. I mean, I don't know how. I mean, I've, I finished it. I was going round, back round for like the purple and the like black coins. And I was really enjoying that. Toe drum was fine. Uh, but after a while, I just, just jumped off. But I feel like I got my money's worth. But yeah, I feel like if they had half that price, it would have been, would have been much bigger. Sean, when it mm-hmm. came out on Android, did you, did you play it? I did. Um, and then, yeah, just sort of bounced off it for, I don't know, don't really know why, it just wasn't, like the whole Toad Run thing, I I think I got it in my head that that was like a, like a sort of an asynchronous but a competitive mode against you mates, and it yeah. kind of is, not, but not really, no. yeah, <laughs> um, and I just, yeah, I don't know, like I felt, to be fair, the difficulty spike thing was just like, I was just getting pissed off. I was going through levels, missing the the coins and stuff, and just being like, "Well, there's no easy way to like. You can't just head back and grab you can't them. just you got, turn around. Yeah, yeah, like you've got to restart." And I just I don't know. Just found that a bit irritating, really. Especially yeah, when you get to because I was I got up to doing like the black coins and got about like halfway through, mm-hmm. and it just starts to get really frustrating because yeah. it's like you know if you if you miss one, then you know like near the end or something, it's like oh I've got to do this whole thing again, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's it you can't really go away. How how much was it on Android? Was uh, it, do you I'm, remember? I think it was it was like yeah eight or nine quid. Well, okay, I thought they they corrected it and made it a bit cheaper or something. No, but I don't maybe think not. so. Corrected it. <laughs> um, okay. Okay, um, next story is that this, you know, there was the whole rumours before about the Xbox, like, having, like, a bundle where you got, like, the like the machine plus, yep. uh, you know, Game Pass, etc. Mm. That is happening, it seems. Although yeah. it's only happening so far in the US. And well, testing it out, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, there's going to be, there's two tiers of the service. So, in the US, for $22 a month, you get an Xbox One S and Xbox Live Gold and Game Pass. And that's for 24 months. So at the end of the 24 months, you then own the machine. Like, it's it's yours, and, and that's it. For $35 a month, you get an Xbox One X in with, with the Live Gold and the Game Pass as well. Now, doesn't the yeah. article explain this is actually cheaper than just buying the console? <laughs> yeah, that's what's weird, <laughs> because... In the article, it explains that the total cost for the two-year subscription mm. is five hundred twenty-eight dollars for the Xbox One S and eight hundred and forty for the Xbox One X. Mm. Whereas, if you bought them outright, it'd be including like a live subscription, it'd be like six hundred sixty dollars mm. for the S and eight hundred sixty for the uh, the One X. So, I mean, they must be weird, isn't it? they must be banking on the fact that people like if you were to just buy the console on its own, you wouldn't necessarily maintain that twenty-four month. Live subscription, yes. right? No, no. Yeah. What they're doing, Sean, yeah. I, I, like I've thought about this. <laughs> In two years' time, do you really think that console is going to be that price? Good point. So they're going to get point. them to buy it at that, you know, four hundred and fifty pound price point or whatever it is in America. So yeah. And, so in two years' time, you're still paying the two year old. Still paying. You're paying yeah, the yeah, full yeah. price. You know, get them now so they pay smaller, <laughs> and then by the time it's fair, it's going to be like two hundred dollars. But then, cheap like, or some you shit. don't get that leeway with smartphones, though, do you? Like smartphones, no, you don't. Like, you don't you, because you because the telephone people are cunts. They- a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> what's that you want what you want do you remember like i mean eight years ago you just you want internet on your phone yeah it's unlimited yeah right, right okay now now in 2018 i want internet on my phone okay two gigs what no that's nothing <laughs> just i mean to be fair it. you couldn't two gigs. get anything good on the internet on your phone 10 years ago of course you could like what, what, what was it um no i said like eight years ago when okay. i've got my iphone 3g yeah I still had like YouTube and all that sort of shit on it, and it, yeah, it yeah, was suppose, free. Yeah. It was just unlimited data. Like nowadays, it's just like it's so expensive if you want to get like more than ten gigs. It's Do you know what fucks ridiculous. me up as well is the the like my the internet connection on my phone, like in my house, is twice as fast as my actual wired broadband connection. It's just that, like, obviously, Ouch. yeah. So I, I get like seventy meg. 
on my on just using 4G and I get about 30 odd on the on the actual phone line. But obviously, yeah, like but on the, there's no such thing as an unlimited phone tariff anymore because they, as you say, they just they know they can nickel and dime you for it and be like, "Oh, you want to watch like, it's just just yeah. ridiculous." Like yeah. I mean, when you're doing this 8 years ago and having unlimited data and now like it just I mean, that's such a clear case of, oh, fuck you guys. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, that's, that's too Suck good, in, so we're going to withdraw that offer now. Like, no yeah. one's texting anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I, love, I love that when they go, yeah, but it's unli- unlimited text messages. Yeah. Oh, sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> what, what? What is a text message? <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, uh, Xbox. So uh, obviously, uh, like, Sean, you haven't got an Xbox. <laughs> oh, yeah. If this, I mean, this isn't, this isn't coming out to the UK yet, but would mm. you even anticipate, would you even entertain idea of maybe paying 20 quid a month for this sort of thing i mean i suppose if i wanted i could just get one on finance but then obviously i'd pay a bit more for it um because it'd be interest so uh, yeah i suppose it's marginally better than that but then i would but feel if- pressured into getting my money's worth from it every month do you know what i mean so y- the thing is, is like if I didn't own okay, if I didn't own other consoles and I was just going to get a new machine, this would be this would be interesting. I yeah, think. yeah, because because you get like Game Pass and all that as well. You'd have like you'd be set. Like, oh, that's right. Yeah. This is Game Pass as well, isn't it? Yeah, no, that's that yeah. is yeah, that's a pretty good deal then, isn't it? I want to know right how they deal with the situation where someone stops paying. Well. Like- that's Am I going to get Major Nelson knocking on my door in a black suit? <laughs> he's going to have the gloves, is isn't he? The gloves he will be there. <laughs> yeah. They do do a credit check before you before you do it. You have to be like a qualified customer in, in uh, inverted commas. Yeah, all right, Joe, so, but yeah. that doesn't mean that everyone with a credit check is not going to no, stop that. Just cancel the direct <laughs> no, debit that's... and laugh. Yeah. Ah, just imagine a brick coming through your window <laughs> and then like and then you realize it's not a brick it's an original xbox <laughs> <laughs> copy i know sam pay up or we'll fucking we'll cut you off <laughs> it will cut your fucking legs <laughs> um yeah i don't know this might help some people i can't see myself ever doing this but um yeah i, I mean, mean it's, it's not like it's not manipulative it's not like fucking bright house you ever been in a bright house yeah. I've been outside Bright House. <laughs> What's the Bright House? And so it's basically, it's it's a shop where it's like, yeah, we sell tellies and sofas and games consoles and stuff. And there'll be like a little label on it that says like three pounds. And then you look closer, it's like three pounds a day for six years. <laughs> 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 and it's like, if you look at what Sorry. you're actually paying, it's literally like twice the value of, of the item. And it's like, oh, right, I understand finance plans is a bit of interest. But like, it is just like, let's manipulate thick people into paying way too much for stuff that they can't afford yeah it, like I, 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 it amazes me that I, it's legal i think i think you're right i mean it is it, they, they seem to be doing it in a fair way yeah. um that that you know that people it gives people options so i think i think it's a good thing if anything mm. um it's definitely a good thing yeah yeah and, and for like uh you know people who, who don't want to pay up front or they want to do this yeah i think it's a great option yeah like, like you said i don't think it's i'll ever entertain but yeah, it's it's good so, for some people. So you're talking about that sort of comp- the, those sort of companies mm-hmm. that that do that. Yeah. That like you just think you are cheeky bastards. Yeah. Is it um, not Amiibo? What is that Amigo or something? The the oh the, the it's like personal the loans that a friend has to guarantee you or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But then like that advert makes me sick because <laughs> it literally <laughs> just goes, "It's good." To have, the, and I just thought, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's good I to mean, be like, in debt. <laughs> 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 yeah. It's like you saw, the, saw that Wonga, like they're nearly, they're dying Are at they? the moment. Which is, I don't think anyone's going to shed any tears about that no, company. Probably, going probably to not. No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Quick, loan a load of money off them. <laughs> You'll never have to pay it back. That's how it works, right? Yeah. yeah. What I just, what you said it's about like the, block, the blockbuster went bust. <laughs> about the price yeah. of this of these Xbox like going down in the future. Mm. Is this going to stop them doing that though? Because you're going to get uh, people would be annoyed, wouldn't they? No chance. Like, in- no, 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 no. I mean, they'll just adjust the prices, the monthly, yeah, the, the, the monthly so? subscription. There's no way yeah. they're going to reduce the, the, them. Though. No way. I mean, surely, gonna reduce- surely it's just going to be the course, same as, as phones. Will. Like you can get my phone. Like I'm still paying, you know, X amount per month, and you can now get my phone on the same tariff for less. That's just- exactly. Yeah. There's no way they're going to reduce your monthly payment just because a phone may or may not have gone down. Oh, it's, yeah, sorry, but, they, but they might offer what, what, sorry, it for what, less to new no, people. No, 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 no. They're not. Sorry, they're not going to reduce your payments once you've signed up. Yeah. But the longer you go through it. They will be saying, right, if you want this deal now, it's, it's a, bit less. a few dollars less yeah, yeah, yeah. than it would have been a few months ago. Yeah. yeah. 
Does that, that? I mean, that just seems like the natural way of doing things. So yeah, they're not they're not going to wait until it's like, you know, you could get an Xbox One X for like a hundred quid, and they're like. Fifty pounds a month. <laughs> also, yeah, okay. I wonder if you could do. You know, like if you ring up Sky or Virgin, you're like, look, I'm not happy with my service. They're like, okay, we'll add another ten gig to your data plan, or we'll give you more channels. So, like, yeah, I'm not happy with this. Okay, two Xboxes, Xbox um, Nine. Um, what do you have? A that? green, <laughs> a green tankard in Sea yeah. of Thieves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> an like Xbox, an Xbox badge. badge. Uh, a Master <laughs> Chief poster. Am I yeah. anyone? <laughs> it sounds like a generation game now. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, let's go. A cuddly toy. Okay, um, okay. So next, there's like a whole bunch of kind of like game announcements, but I don't know. Some of them are interesting, and one of them's weird. Um, the first one, I mean, Streets of Rage Four is now coming, which is something that mm. I did, and so I did not you, see coming. It's very good. All man. over the spraying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> well, you, we gone. Sorry, you mentioned this in the WhatsApp group before we started, and we said, yeah, we'll talk about this. Yeah. Sean, you said people were being insanely negative about it. Yeah. So what? What? I, I've not seen anything. So the, what, the majority happened? of the trailer is is just an animation of the characters from Streets of Rage decking people. But there's about two seconds of gameplay footage, um, which to me just looks like a new Streets of Rage game. And every- I saw it as well, and I thought. Oh, that looks like a Streets of Rage game. That yeah. looks, I don't know. It looks all right. And everyone's what, been what was... everyone's been shitting on it, saying it looks like a an old Flash game, and they hate the art style. And even though it's by the people who did the remake of Wonder Boy, which everyone agreed looked amazing, it's um, true. But it's also by Streets of Fury creator, which is a terrible game. Is it? Is like, that, is that it, definitely bad? Yeah, because I, I never liked. Yeah. I know, like the art style of that, which is luckily completely unlike this. Um, I never played it though. See, I'm see with this game. I'm kind of looking forward to this actually, because yeah. although I'm also of the, I don't feel the art style really suits it completely mm. because I I would have preferred like a pixel art, none of the one of those kind of games. Yeah, but they did a fantastic job with Wonder Boy three, and mm. so I'm perfectly happy to give them a go with this. The only thing, the main thing I'm concerned about, which is what. A lot of other people have said as well is that there's, I mean, there's probably not going to be a Yuzo Koshiro soundtrack, is there? Which is like, yeah, that's, that's one of the core components of the game, yeah. and it's like it'd be a shame if that's that's not there. I'm, I mean, I'm hoping at least maybe there may be some remixes or something like that. I mean, that's mm. what they did with Wonder Boy. It mm. was the same music, and they just kind of remixed it, and yeah, it yeah. sounded pretty good. I mean, this is I'm this not- is interesting off the back of what I was saying about Windjammers too, as well, because this is published by .mu. Um, yeah. And I was saying last week, yeah, so they've announced that Windjammers 2 is happening. It's like, yeah, but who's making it? Because .mu have just done, like, re- you know, remakes or, or ports of, of old arcade games. Um, mm-hmm. So obviously, yeah, this is something they've announced, another thing they've announced that is actually new. And yeah, it's the guys who did Streets of, Streets of was it Streets of Fury? It's it's that, they're mm. involved, but it's also Lizard Cube, yeah. who worked on the who Wonder, did Wonder Boy 3. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but they're also doing that, the Monster Monster World one as well, aren't they? Yes. So that's, they're pretty busy. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. I'm totally. If you're a fan of Streets of Rage, mate, be just be happy that it's coming. Yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> yeah. if, if it's shit, it's shit. But just give it a go. And, At know. least it's something because there's there's so few like brawlers around now. You just they just don't get released yeah. apart from well, there have been ones, but they're really bad. So just hopefully this will be um this will be something at least. Mm-hmm. Cool. Next one, which is I'm including this because I think Sean, you told me to uh, Did about I? two weeks ago. Or something. <laughs> yeah, no, he, this is me, right? Yeah. Yeah. Was it you? It was I can't me, remember. Right? Yeah, so. Amazon are turning its Grand Tour TV show into a game, and I mean, obviously, it's a it's a racing game, and it's being put together by Amazon Game Studios, and they're going to release it episodically at the same time as the next season of the show. And uh, yeah, the footage. I mean, I didn't think the footage looked that great. Oh, was there what, the what footage? I didn't see any. Yeah, I saw I the footage looked alright. I saw the, I the, the, the sort of really obviously fake quotes from the lads, mm-hmm. um, which were, pr- right, were pretty Right. Okay. Pretty so, uh, has anyone got those quotes? Uh, up what, up no. in front of me? No, I mean, I assume is it not in the link? That okay, put in the I've, yeah, no, I've got one here, okay. right? Okay. Uh, so Jeremy Clarkson is quoted to have said, "It's a video game featuring me, the crashy one and the slow one. <laughs> That's all you need to know. If you've always wanted to come on the road with us, this is as close as you'll ever get, unless you kidnap James and steal his face. I mean." <laughs> <laughs> There's there's another one. James May said, "If you've ever wanted to do my job, now you can. Obviously, not literally. It's just a game. So please don't go through the drawers of my desk." <laughs> um, Hilarious. Then, ha- 
I mean, Hammond said something as well, but <laughs> <laughs> did you did you did you also see the power ups that you have when you drive? No, like, no what is it? Sarcasm. Well, I don't know what. Apparently, there's one of the power ups is called High T, and it dumps cups and saucers on the track. You know, to like make this absolutely mental. Stuff. What? Yeah. Like, we don't Here know we what go. the game is like. Here we go. Look, look. We don't know what the game is like. It could come out. It could be decent. Who, who knows, right? We've, none of us have played it. But <laughs> what my brain went to when I saw those quotes was, obviously, if you're working in the PR for this this game, you want quotes from the people on the show, right? Yeah. So you probably they've probably sent an email request. Look, can you send us a quote? And, you know, that's fine. You get them back, and you want those quotes in the piece. But how someone at that PR company hasn't looked at those quotes and gone, ah, just leave them off, <laughs> just leave them off, <laughs> just don't put them in the press release. I know, I know, it's good to tie a name, you know, famous name to the gap. But look at them, look at those quotes. Don't go through my drawers and my desk. I mean, if anything, that's going to do the game harm. <laughs> so delete the quotes, right? Never speak of them again. Like, wipe your hard drive. Let's get rid of those things <laughs> as quick as Which possible. I'm assuming the PR's written them and just said, like, can oh, you yeah, get them to sign say. off on this? And, yeah, yeah, there's no, no way they actually count. <laughs> no they're, they're way. way too busy for that. Like, no- PR's written them and they're like, hey, hey sign off. And they'll say, yeah, go on, whatever. There's yeah. no way a, a genuine PR company has gone, that's good. That's funny. Like, there's no way. Look, there's no on way. The, on yeah, the country, Dave, I think a PR company is the only group of people who could think that was funny. <laughs> No, <laughs> come on! They, they, it's their job to put out like press release. Yeah, I mean, Matt, you okay, read Dave, those Dave, and go, have "What you the seen fuck?" The, Dave, have you seen the juiced commercial? PR companies <laughs> mess oh, up no, something. Again. <laughs> <Fuck you know. laughs> I never talk about juice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but I come on! I don't believe. I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't get me wrong. I don't believe these people said these things, mm. but I've got a feeling that an assistant wrote them. <laughs> On the iPhone. <laughs> what would it have be brilliant if it just said, don't go through my drawers sent from my iPhone? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, whatever. The game, it doesn't appeal. I have to, I'm not into that that uh, that TV show or whatever. Um, I've watched a couple and there's been a few moments where I thought, oh, this is, I could see why people like it, but. Uh, you see, yeah, I, right. so I you know, quite enjoyed the new. Top Gear, but the only Top Gear game I want is a management sim where you're producing the show and you've got to hold on to a presenter for more than one season. <laughs> you've got to deal with no, no. It's set, it's set like ten years ago, and you've got to deal with Jeremy Clarkson <laughs> on a daily basis. You've got, you've got to send emails out trying to cover up the fact that he punched a producer in the <laughs> yeah. face again. What's he? What's he said? He said that nursery rhyme, but he included that word right. Okay, <laughs> and then you get like that's like the end boss <laughs> <laughs> trying to cover that shit up. Um, yeah, we could call it. Top gear, top gear, dealing with a massive twat. <laughs> <laughs> Colon. <laughs> massive twat. Uh, I'd play that game, yeah, definitely. Yeah, You're right, Sean. Yeah. yeah, get it signed up. Next. Okay, so there's another bit of news about a game, which is Shenmue 3, and it's finally got a release date, which I doubt it will keep. <laughs> um, it's coming, so apparently I now can't it's coming... Wait. Okay. Apparently now it's coming out on the 27th of August next year, which means it's almost like 20 years since the original game came out, because that was December 1999. Um, The weird thing about this is that Yu Suzuki has also said that this is not probably going to be the last game in the series. Oh, brilliant. And the brilliant. <laughs> because brilliant. There's going to be another cliffhanger. <laughs> because he said that Shenmue 3 will not end the story because he envisaged it having like 11 chapters and there's no way he could wrap it You're up like in this. And it's like, yeah, it's 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 just crazy. I mean, like everyone's put money into this Kickstarter. Everyone's excited about seeing the conclusion to Rio's story. <laughs> That's not going to happen. So it's just... Uh, we didn't I don't put understand. Money. Like, James. Because everyone's just been like, look, I know it might be shit, but I need to kick Landy's ass. I need closure. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then that's it, I'm fine. But it sounds like they not, might not even get that, which is hilarious. Look. It's, uh, yeah. Do you know, I, I think the weirdest thing about this story is, uh, when did, when's the release date? Uh, 27th of August next year. Right. 
if I was a Shenmue fan, I'd be shitting myself. Because you, <laughs> did you see the trailer they, they released? Yeah. yeah. Mm. It was like, what the fuck the, was this? The, 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 we see, the thing is, the one there was another one which was like not... It was one that was shown on the show floor at Gamescom, which looked better. But it still doesn't look like what it needs to be, I, I don't think. It doesn't I mean, look like a stage, real game. But... I don't know what it is about the look of <laughs> yeah. it. I can't... No, well, there's, there's, no, there's no exploration either. They're not showing any of that stuff. Yeah. It's just these why? little... Do you know why, Sean? The trailer was four minutes long, <laughs> and we saw the same, like, two... Se- it was as if I got two <laughs> scenes and just chopped them up between each other. Like, it was like, See, oh, right, he's talking to this girl in the field. Oh, now he's fighting that big guy. And now the I'm girl in the field again. And now the big this. guy fighting again. It was, like, <laughs> it was like, why the fuck is it just... Is it just two scenes in this whole game? Well, and then it ends. See you in Shenmue 4 in 20 years. <laughs> The other thing that I'm not so happy about with this is that with Shemu 2, which you'll find out when you get to it, Dave, when they get to like mainland China, it's very like I, I, it was a long time ago that I played it, but it was it was kind of like drab and not that great. But what they've shown in these trailers, China didn't look anything like that at that time, <laughs> like during that period at all, and that's upset me. It's uh, <laughs> what yeah, do you mean? Well, it doesn't like, look like anything it like that. It didn't. Comp- it didn't stick to um, historical facts. Yeah. And yeah. it's okay. I mean, okay, it, okay, okay, within, okay. The other games... minutes of booting up the game, I got a Sega Saturn out in the eighties. Like I, oh, I don't yeah. think Obviously, that was a staple. Oh, no, no, but, the, the... but they in in the first game, we'll get to this probably when you when you get to what you've been playing. But it's like they did at least try and like model like how buildings looked, and they also did like the whole thing where like it was the like the weather that you get in the game is exactly the same as it was yeah, yeah. at that time, like in in Tokyo, in, you know, in, in Japan. It's like they did try and do that, whereas this. Is Why go through looks- all that effort and then put a Sonic the Hedgehog toy or a Virtua Fighter toy? It's fan in- service, isn't it? Yeah, but I know. But if it's set in the eighties, mate, it don't make sense. The well, Sega Saturn was funny. I didn't even realise. I put the Sega Saturn on, and there's- people were calling it the time travelling Sega Saturn. <laughs> yeah. I was like, "What are you?" T- Oh yeah, this is the eighties. <laughs> no, it should have been a master system. But that's why in his draw, you've got like all those master system manuals and stuff as well. You know. It was just, you know, just I love it if like the conversation was like, well, okay, so yeah, we'll put a master system in, and someone went, I'd... "Master system was shit, though, lads. <laughs> Do we? Can we just put a Saturn in? Should we put a Mega Drive? No, that was shit as well. Uh, <laughs> Sega Saturn. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> don't worry, we've got the dream card. No, that's worse. <laughs> don't, Dave. Just don't. Yeah, don't. don't. You're going too far now. It's like <laughs> at David Turner's on Twitter. <laughs> right, go on. Yeah, so that's that. So the last the last piece of news which is kind of which is really terrible is that there was another mass shooting. Um uh, this this happened uh, in yeah. Jacksonville in Florida at a Madden ninety eight tournament and the shooter was identified as being this guy called David Katz, who was nineteen from Baltimore, and he was one of the competitors at the event. And so so he died and there was two other people as well that he shot, and then I think he killed himself. And apparently he'd, he'd lost his game, and then he just opened fire. And, I mean, EA gave the statement. They just said, um, all of us at Electronic Arts are devastated by this horrific event, and we also joined the community in thanking the first responders who were quickly on the scene. What Our focus a hard right now- thing to write. Yeah. As a games company, what a hard thing to write. And, um, you know, we talk about there's this... There's that feeling where it's like you all tragedies are tragedies and they should be treated equally and um I get that like I I totally agree with that and I'm 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 not trying to do but there is something about it hitting home on some level you know I I certainly got that with um the attacks in uh Paris uh because I'm a huge Eagles of Death Metal fan and I've been to see them countless times to, so to know that that would happen at one of their gigs it hit home with me and there was people that i kind of knew through um you know internet forums based around these bands and stuff that were at that gig and shit um and this was another one of those not 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 quite as striking for me obviously but um it knowing that you know we've been to gaming events millions of times you know you you go to places where um you know we this is our hobby and so you know the sort of people that are at these places and it's always, you know, a celebration and, you know, people are, are excited and it's just hanging out with people, like-minded people and stuff like that. And for, to know that something that horrific went down in a place not too dissimilar to places that we've been before, um, it it hits home 
harder for some reason. And again, I'm not saying, you know, that any tragedy is any worse or, or, um, or, 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 or as bad or whatever. And it's just when it does touch on the cultures that you're quite familiar with, that sort of, it affects you a little bit more or whatever. And I was, uh, yeah, I was a bit of a mess the other night when I, you know, when I heard the news and it, you know, and then, I, and I got fucked off with all the politics that, that I always do. I always get really pissed off. I have to go off of Twitter for a while because, you know, everyone starts making points and stuff. And I just, I get really, really fucking bummed out. Um, yeah, but what can you say to that man? I'm fucking horrific. And obviously, I know we, they were all in our thoughts that that night. I mean, I assume uh, we didn't really talk about it privately or anything, but yeah, mm. just sat in front of my computer reading the news and getting upset, basically. I was quite <laughs> surprised. Shit. I know this is Dave, you're saying people getting political about it. This might be exactly what you were talking about, but I was really surprised the amount of people were like, here's the footage. It was streamed. Like, yeah, I, I mean, that's going to happen as who well. Who needs to see that? Yeah. I mean, I, that was yeah. in like the news stories. I yeah. I'm not. Don't want to click that to be honest. Yeah. It's like you know. All right, it's a bit thanks. Odd. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's shit in it. Gun control, guys. And, do you, know it's what, a and thing. Do you know what? That's the other thing as well. People in the near future, as they always do, will always try and use this to gain advantage to make a point. Um, and the only way you can combat that is by fucking ignoring it, hmm. because they'll stop doing it when they realise that no one's listening to what they're fucking saying. You know, uh, there'll be people saying that. Um, using this, that gun control is a a bad thing, and they'll be literally using this story to try and back that oh, up. Oh yeah, the ODR, yeah. That's, they're like, oh well, you yeah, know, if there'd that's, been that's other people my... around with guns, it would have been fine. Yeah, that's not my <laughs> my personal opinion. But getting involved in an argument with someone that does that is not worth it. So I step back. Mm. Um, so I I think part of me thinks is self conscious how I get quiet over these sort of events. Uh, you know, when when this sort of shit happens, I I, I go very quiet. Um, on social media and stuff, um, but that's if I suppose if I can tell you anything from this, that that's why I, d- I don't like getting involved with that stuff because I think it's pointless and not actually quite. It's like doesn't sit you know, right. With me. Just think like what what do I have to add to this? You know, like I you know there's there's not really much you can say apart from you just it makes you feel terrible that this has happened. Right. But yeah, yeah, like, I think it's like obviously being a Brit, you sort of do you want to be able to do something? The fact is, you really can't. Um, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, it's shit. Um, but yeah, but yeah. Like, I mean, I see why people get into the arguments online because it is frustrating, and obviously, the way the law is in America at the moment allows this to continue happening. So, of course, people have got to shout about it. But yeah, I know what you mean. Like, yeah, of course, but like yeah, people yeah, yeah. in our situation, it's like, well, I don't know. Can we? I don't think we can influence this in any considerable way. No. <laughs> yeah, um, and, you know, well, I could get some. Again, some people say that's not the point. You should be. Hmm. You know, but I, at the end of the day, I'm, I, I don't like, I especially don't like arguing in anger yeah. ever. And it's almost impossible for me not to get angry about this sort of stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. like genuinely. Um, so I, I, yeah. I was listening I'm, to, um, I think I've mentioned Laser Time before. They did a podcast about, oh, about God, yeah. toys, um, that are dangerous. And, he, and one of them makes the point that, like, lawn darts, <laughs> lawn darts did start killing kids and injuring them. And they just so they're like, right, well, that's it. Make them illegal. <laughs> it's like, yeah, uh, it's like yeah, guys, d- 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 <laughs> like it's 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 that simple. I mean, obviously, I don't know. It's different in America because guns are a bit more culturally ingrained. But it's just like you can act on these uh, things I, when I you. I mean, we could we, how many how... times have we said this stuff? How many times? Well, yeah, well, yeah. yeah it just yeah, fuck f- fucks me off. And you will see, you know, the inevitable newspapers that seem to suggest that um, a certain. Uh, medium is is to blame. Oh yeah, and, I, had, um, uh, I woke up to a Google just, News alert. It's like killer identified as a gamer in inverted commas, and I was like, oh, "Fucking hell!" Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's shit. Yeah. It's fucking shit. Yeah. But that's that's all we can really say about that stuff. I mean, yeah. we had to mention it. It was a huge news story this week, but um, yeah, uh, just... it just yeah, I get I get really fucking bummed out about this stuff. Yeah. So let's probably move on now. Yeah, it's horrendous. Uh, well, there was one other non bit of news, but there was the um. The Cyberpunk 2077 live stream before we recorded this. Did you yeah. guys all watch it? Yes. I did, yeah. I watched the majority of it. Yeah, it looks, I mean, it looks bloody good. It does look good. I mean, obviously it it's good. like There's 2020 no or whenever. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think they actually confirmed like a release date, but 
you've got to imagine it's like a, a generation away pretty much but uh it, uh, possibly yeah it, it, I mean, it looks great I'm, i mean I, i've played a little bit of witcher but i imagine if you've played the witcher you must it might be maybe better for you because you can maybe see some advances in how missions nope. are structured and no no absolutely <laughs> not i mean it didn't remind me of the witcher in any way shape or form no. it felt completely different the, the little dialogue options looked kind of the same that was about the only <laughs> the only thing but even that the, the, i mean the dialogue options weren't like although the actual options themselves look the same mm. The um, how they were popping up was completely different. You know, yeah. it was like so frequent in this, whereas in The Witcher, it's like walk up to a person, mm. then you get the dialogue option. Here, it was just like, yeah, fucking, you just say what you want whenever you yeah, want. Yeah, right? yeah. It's, it, it it was impressive, but um, I I'm surprised that they showed it off. I'm happy they showed it off because the amount of smug journalists that were like, yeah, this is not the sort of thing that we'll ever see the light of day <laughs> after E3. And it was like, yeah, no, we've seen it now. <laughs> Shut up. Um, uh, but, but at the same time, I was like, wow, I mean, showing a game off this early, you know that's going to be side by side on Digital Foundry in no time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we've all seen it now. We can all compare it. That same scene will be acted out a million times on various different websites. Mm. Uh, and torn to pieces, but yeah, I do. I mean, it looks great, doesn't it? I, I it think, really I think I'm going to end up booking a few days off for this. And I, I do, I do not do that generally. I think that's normally when people are, like, oh, I'm going to book a week off because the game's coming out. It's like, mate, do you not want to spend time with your family? Um, but on this, on, ooh, the, on this, on ooh, this occasion, Matt, on this occasion, <laughs> you said exactly that last week, and now you know just Sean's, what Sean was thinking. <laughs> yeah, but also, Sean, people can do what they want when they're time, right? They can, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's it's yeah like, um, no, like I say, I, yeah, like looking at this this video, I was like, yeah, I'm going to need a couple of days for this. I think, <laughs> I think that's going to happen. Looks good. It does looks good. Right, should we get on to what we've been playing? Yep. Yeah. Good. Uh, should I start? Should I just get my oh, let's get Shenmue stuff with. out of the way? Go on. <laughs> so I've been playing. I am now. I would say six hours, maybe just under six hours, into um, Shenmue the HD re-release. So it's not, they've not, as far as I'm aware, they've not done anything since. So what's the, what's the timeline here, James? They, so they bought both out for the, um, uh, the Dreamcast and then they re-released two for the original Xbox. No, what happened was the, the first game came out for Dreamcast (laughs) and then the second one came out, but only in Europe and Japan, um, for Dreamcast and America never got it. And then, yeah, it was, yeah, because it was right at the end of the Dreamcast life. It was really, yeah, it it was kind of dead by that point. And uh, then, yeah, then the the Microsoft picked up um, the second one as like a re-release. But they did more to it because they didn't just sort of like port it. They they actually like did some upgrade work on it and changed some stuff. They also added, because when the, the, what's called the UK release of it, only had like uh, Japanese voice acting. There was no, there was no English, uh, <laughs> English voice acting. Did but it have they... English voice acting for the original game? Uh, yes, yeah, there was English, right, okay. yeah, for that. But then they did the, yeah, for the, but the, 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 the Xbox version, they added like an English like dub as well, and uh, yeah, like updated the visuals a bit. And then right. they also shoved in that copy of um, the film, like the. Where they basically just take all the bits from the first game and just cut <laughs> it into that a you film. show, but you bought over. Yeah, I, bought I don't over know what you're expecting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really cool, um, but yeah, but go on. Right, so this version is what? Like, this is the. Is this a completely new version then? Um, yeah, it's a tarted up version of the first one. Is uh, which is not, as far as I'm aware, it's not been done before because it was not. It, this is yeah, this is the first time this has been like re-released. Um, so. Obviously, there's a history uh, with James and I about this game. Um, and, I mean, James, I don't know who you think I am. Like, I mean, I don't know why you <laughs> think that I would just actively go out to hate the game just to piss you off. Again, I think it's narcissism. Um, but, so, I, yeah, I'm about six hours into the first game. I'm playing both games on, on uh, Twitch. Uh, I'm streaming. I mean, I stream four nights this week but I, it will be less uh, going forward because I'll have other things to play but I will guarantee at least one stream a week hopefully uh, if all goes well but it's going to take me a while um, I, I've i never played these games before I kind of knew what to expect to an extent but didn't really know that much I'm actually enjoying it like there's a lot of people that love Shenmue that 
are, are nervous about this game being re-released because you know it's a whole new audience and obviously it's really old and uh, and there's there's you know things in there that just wouldn't work today um and although that's true i'm finding a lot to enjoy about it um initially when i first started playing and you can see my streams on youtube if you if you're cur- curious initially when i first started playing it that what i was enjoying about it was was just the laughable stuff i mean from the the book that is obviously designed to tell the player where they're at, at the game and so that they don't forget what they're looking for uh when they're wandering around the towns um <laughs> so for that stating things like dad killed a man or giving the number for the police in there and stuff like that. It's just, it's just weird shit written in there. Um, to the uh, utterly atrocious voice acting, um, which, yeah, I mean, that in itself just offers a ridiculous amount of laugh. The awkward writing, like the, the, the actual words these characters are saying is just absolutely bizarre. You know, um, uh, I'm trying to think of an example. Um, you know, the, the conversation about the cat that got run over, it was just like, hey, <laughs> mister, wanna wrestle? Stuff like that. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's all very, very odd. Um, but so initially I was just laughing at that shit. But eventually, I mean, for starters, you could totally see why this was a huge deal for certain people, um, when it first came out. I mean, uh, to be able to like wander around this town, to be able to open pretty much any door or at least interact with pretty much everything. Uh, on one level, that's brilliant. I think more to the point, the fan service in it is just, uh, it's, I mean, the fan service is brilliant. You know, everything Sa- Sega branded. There's the games like there's previous, like there's old arcade games in there. There's um, little things to collect that are all Sega branded. Um, you know, everything, there's loads of things to buy in shops, like you can br- uh, browse shelves and there's loads of little Sega nods in there as well. Um, you could see why this spoke to people back then. I totally understand that. Um, but also just wondering about the town, chatting to people is quite fun. I mean, you don't always get a decent reply, but for the most part, there's characters there that I, there was something about wandering around the town. And everyone know not really knowing who Ryu what is, but kind of knowing that person. It's got that small town feeling where you go up to some, you know what looks like a stranger, and they're like, "Hi Ryu, how's it going?" You know, and there's just a homely feeling about that initial sort of larger area that you go to, um, that sort of speaks speaks to you. There's I mean, there are some negatives, James, and you do overlook a few things on this, like, um. For example, the waiting around stuff is uh, there's a lot of padding in there. I mean, yeah. two days running, it goes come back here tomorrow, and I'm like, okay. Also, so the basic idea with the game is that like your gaming loop is you're always looking for something, and so it, you know it starts off with you're looking to find out about the black car, mm. then you're looking for someone who has spoke to someone within the black car, then you're looking for a member of a gang that knows someone that was in the black car. And, you know, it goes on. It's just a thread. You're just walking around talking to people. Um, In between, you know, so there are moments where it's like, come back at three o'clock, come back at nine o'clock, you know, stuff like that. In between, obviously, you're supposed to just dot about talking to people, trying stuff out. Um, the problem is there's sort of trigger points, isn't there? So, and and the pacing isn't quite right. So yeah. when you're ready to move on to the next story bit, you've already spoken to everyone in the town. And if you went and spoke to them again, it would just be the same shit all over again. But you've still got a day to kill before you can trigger the next sort of push forward in the story. Once you do that, there's a bunch of cutscenes. Then the people that you go and talk to, they say different things and it leads to different, you know, conversations and they ask you to do different things. And, and so, you're constantly going, if the trigger point was yesterday rather than tomorrow, then I could see the pace of this game being really good. Mm. Like, obviously, there's loads of stuff in here, but you get to sort of the checkpoint, the end of the, you know, that chapter as such, before you're actually at the end of it. And you want to just push forward, but you've got to wait a day or whatever. And that, the pacing is wrong in this, uh, in, the, in this game, but, um, and, and, you know, there is stuff like 
the the control system is obviously built for a single analog stick controller. Um, so going back and playing with two sticks is a bit jarring because you're ch- constantly trying to jockey the camera, and the more you do that, the more you fuck up the well, what's going on on screen. Um, yeah, as I say, that like the 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 writing and i know that this was just i assume it was directly translated from japanese because the yes. writing is just fucking weird yeah. i mean uh, completely unacceptable in my book you know that some i mean of even at the time out, i think people knew well, that that's to what an extent, i'm saying they, yeah, yeah. You could, well, the, you could turn around. You could turn around and say, "Oh, no, but this is a really old game." Yeah, but it wasn't the first ever game. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, this is the, the games were about around this period that actually had decent writing, and you could understand what, some conversations, <laughs> like you know, constantly Ryu going, "Uh," like just as as a line. Yeah, that, that can I just say something about that? Because here we go. It comes to the best. No, no, I'm oh. not. No, I'm not going to. Because the thing is, you're right about a lot of this stuff. Particularly like the like the English audio dub is really bad. It's really terrible, and also a lot of the dialogue is really bad. But the stuff with like the like the sounds, like him going oh, oh, and stuff like that, that is also part of like a part of language that would have been translated across because Chinese is the same. Like you, you yeah, do but the, we, you ja- do that but as well. Japanese, but J- Japanese games have been translated at that time anyway. Yeah, but not like fully voiced in the same way like this. It's this again. This was like one of the first that kind of did this in this way, and it was done badly. And it's one of the reasons why. I mean, it didn't. That's why, like, when okay, when Yakuza first would, when they first decided to like bring that over to the West, they didn't even bother like trying to like translate it in that way. They did it. They did a complete rework of the entire thing yeah. with like new voice actors and like new scripting and everything. And that's why for a long time the series was nearly dead in the West because it cost so much money to do that and not enough people bought it. And didn't it's they the get, same. Um, sorry for the first one. They got like a lot of genuinely famous people. Yeah, in, didn't they, they got like yeah. Mark Hamill and people yeah, like yeah. that. You know, to like play <laughs> stuff, and it's because they'd seen like what happened with Shamu, and it obviously it doesn't work because mm. it's if you're going to translate it, you can't you can't do like a like for like translation because it just sounds terrible. Like if you do that, and but when, how wasn't that picked up at the time? I don't get it. Like who I think sat there probably, and gone, nah, nah, I think this probably is what I see. I'm I'm not going to make excuses for this because obviously it is bad, but I would say that I think. The game costs an enormous amount of money, like, and I think that they probably put a lot more effort into like stuff like the visuals and stuff like that than they did into things like voice translation because that was probably at that time a lot of the translation stuff was an afterthought. I mean, if you think about how many games came out of Japan that had really terrible like translations like into English, it, it's not uncommon. It did happen a lot. You're right though. By that stage, it should have been better. Like, absolutely, it should have been better. But that is the kind of thing where I mean, like I know, like Tom is an obvious point of being <laughs> like a big problem because the English version of that is dreadful. But apparently, it, I mean, it, I don't it's, know it's, because it's, I would go as far as say it's flat out racist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I'd agree with you. But you see, what I would say about that is that go I mean, on. I don't know because I don't speak Japanese. But apparently, if you listen to the, the Japanese version, it he sat like the Japanese version of it. He sounds like a foreign person trying to speak Japanese. <laughs> which is why it sounds so weird, like in that. Mm. And I totally get that because you get that with Chinese as well. Like if when I speak Chinese to people, people, you know, they can tell that you're not a native because it's mm. it's weird. It's like not quite the same. But James, yeah, the, they the, literally the... put mon at the end of every sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's, I mean, the the thing with that is terrible. But again, that's you know, it's from the time it was made. And but you're oh, right, come it's on. still no, terrible. You can't. You can't. We well, we didn't have racial stereotypes back then. Yeah, of course we did. That's what I'm saying. But then you see, that's another thing because. I mean, I. The thing is about a lot of that also is like you get all that stuff like where they say, oh, you know, go and look for Chinese people and stuff, and you can say, oh, you know, how is it that all these Chinese people know each other, like in this local area and stuff? Mm. But the thing is, is like in like in Japan, probably. I mean, I don't know because I've not spent time there, but certainly like in China, there's not. It's a very monocultural society, and you don't see people from other other like ethnic groups like hardly ever. So it's completely plausible that pe- that people from the same like from the same background know each other it's it, it's i mean when i lived there it was like that you know you knew if there was other foreigners living in the area you because there's so few of you and it's it's kind yeah, of but like there's that. also a man with dreads that says mon after every sentence yeah, so, like, is, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not defending that i'm saying that is terrible it's it also, is really i'm quite terrible. interested how did you know that i i was questioning how all chinese people knew each other i, I never said that i said i said as an example you know it's uh, the, come on <laughs> Okay, so I did, I did watch. Okay, so I've watched 
I'll I watched the do first. It. <laughs> I watched the first episode. I watched the first episode that you did, and out of like morbid curiosity, and it was like the first, the first, like the first ten minutes or whatever. I was like, oh, I don't know if I can, I can do this, you know, because it was just the whole like ripping the piss and everything. But by the end of it, by the after a while, like most of the points you were making are totally fair. They're completely fair points, you know, that you like the criticisms that you've got of the game, totally fair. But one of the things that I did think that I did like about your stream, which made, which really cheered me up. Um, was when you started to, you know, you were like looking around the house and then you like started going in the drawers and everything and you started to notice like the amount of detail that was being put, that had been put into that. And you did seem a bit impressed by that. And that, that was when I thought, I think actually you might get this, you know, and it's like, it's not, you know, it, it, I, I don't, you know, it'd be fine to watch you playing it or whatever. Look, right. And this is what I'm getting to. I'm a first time player. Um, I didn't expect to like this because I knew it was a very dated game. Um, you know, often when games try and do something completely different, uh, then they date quite badly, quite quickly. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, because they are essentially trying to set some ground rules, and then obviously games get games like that. They take the initial ideas and and try and perfect them, and uh, it, it you know going back to what that sort of initially groundbreaking game was like is actually a, a terrible thing to do because you know we're used to now what what has become of that type of game um but i am genuinely and i i mean this i am genuinely enjoying it i mean i mean i'm certainly enjoying my time with it more than i did uh the yakuza game that i tried you know yakuza mm-hmm. 0 um because i think with yakuza 0 it was it was a little bit too wacky and um and I didn't enjoy the combat. Yeah. In in this I genuinely think the combat's decent. You know, it's that it's, it's got fighter. that sort of it's, Yeah, it's got yeah. that old school, you know, dodge mechanic. Like it's it works and I and I'm enjoying that side of it. And there's not been too much of it. The other problem I had with Yakuza was just wandering around and constantly getting into fights. And when you're not enjoying the combat, um that's you know, that's that's actually quite irritating. But but this I I mean I've I've enjoyed learning the town um i've like enjoyed learning my way around places and the fact that the pretty much every shop uh on the street you can walk into um is is a big deal because it makes it feel a lot like like there's a lot more happening in this sort of small amount of space there's i mean there's so much happening it's crazy um especially but you know obviously by today's standards it's not that much, but back then, you know, you do have to put yourself in that position and you go, fuck yeah. But, but I think what I'm trying to say is that there'll be a lot of people that will know how dated this is and know that there's a lot of struggles around this game by modern standards. Um, and it, it will put them off. They'd just instantly think, I'll get nothing out of this. There's no way I'm going to put myself through it. I'd say if you were curious about Shenmue, then definitely give it a go because if I can get quite a bit out of it and i have done i'm interested in the story i'm locked in there are characters that i genuinely care about at this point um I, then i would say definitely give it a go because i've i've really been enjoying it i've really been enjoying it james um, see, i'm i'm really pleased that that you have because i think but then and also some of the things that you've mentioned that i think you'll find you are good i mean there's definitely going to be things that are going to really annoy you like in this as you go on because there are a lot of terrible there are a lot of design decisions that like wouldn't be made today, like that are not great. But you will We're find for that, a bus and stuff. Yeah, I mean, you will. But that's the thing because you'll find that when you get to Shamu Two, they did try and address some of that stuff. Like you can, like you can, like fast wait for stuff to happen. Like you don't have to just wait around. You can just like say, okay, I'll just wait here until the thing, and then just press a button, and then it the, the time goes quick and stuff like that. So they did. They figured out that that was a bad idea. I mean, the reason they did it in the first place was to try and like increase the idea of immersion. That like you really are this kid. You really, you know, you really have got to wait for stuff. But obviously, as a game, it doesn't work. It's just it's not that fun. But hmm. they tried, and that's the thing with this series is that they just they tried a lot of stuff. A lot of it didn't work. Some of it really did. And one of the things that I think really did is, like you said, is is like you know learning the like learning the area, you know, being able to explore and you know sort of you know chat with people and stuff like that. And although you know the dialogue is terrible, there is a real attempt there to build a town and to build something which is kind of alive. And 
you, I, I think it succeeded with that. And it's as I said, that's what made me interested in in like Asia and all that kind of thing in the first place was this depiction of this town, even though it's because it is it is different. It's a different. It's like virtual tourism, and it's um yeah. I I just found it an interesting experience, and I'm really glad that you you're giving it a chance. You know, and sort no, of totally and getting something totally, out of it. Mate, on it on, genuinely, I I was always going to give it a chance. That's what I'm like with computer games. When I go into a game, I'm I'm bang up for giving it giving it a go. You know what I mean? Um. And I just thought when I was loading up that game, just ripping into it, it's just that, uh, what's the point? Mm. The, the, I, I was never going to, but what's the point in ripping into a game like this? Yeah. I mean, if if I started to, if if I wasn't enjoying it, I would say, mm-hmm. but at the same time, I'm going to give it a go. And I did. And it only took me about an hour to properly start going, actually, I'm feeling this. I'm feeling this. I like pottering about this town, just chatting to people. It's yeah. fun. I mean, um, that's that's the other thing, because the pace, like the pacing of it is a bit like not great, like in places, but it's certainly, I found it, a mu- it's a much more sort of relaxing experience than something like Yakuza is, because it is mm. just like you are making your own adventure. Whereas with like the Yakuza games, it's much more like, yeah, you know, you're being funneled like where they want you to go, really. Uh, which you know, in a in a bigger way. Which I yeah. mean, I like that, but you know, some people some people don't like it so much. But no, I'm I'm I mean, I'm, I haven't watched all your streams, but I'm going to watch some more because yeah, it's they're good. But do, but don't write it off if you've always wanted to give the game a go. Then then I would say definitely pick it up. It's only twenty quid for both games. Yeah. Um, I I would definitely give it a go because, um, as I say, I'm getting like its flaws is not getting in the way of my enjoyment, and that's. That's a that's a good sign. Um, uh, I can't. I genuinely can't wait to get back to it. And um, two things: the first being uh, Ryu come out with one of the best lines I've ever heard in any <laughs> form of medium ever. The other day, I, I, I mean, it had me in stitches, but it was just also cool as fuck when he got asked, "Hey, are you going to college? Where where, where are you going to go to college?" And he said, "I'm not sure yet, but wherever it is, it will have karate." Like. I just- <laughs> Just the arrogance of even thinking if it doesn't have karate, then it will by the time I'm there. You know, <laughs> so that sort of attitude was brilliant. Have you um, um, second, have you had a on. can of fizzy pop yet? I've not. No, I've bought cans oh. of fizzy pop for people because they keep yeah. fucking asking me. But <laughs> they've, one of the places are, I was really pleased that you found the tomato convenience store as well with that music because it's amazing. <laughs> the, Best the music I've heard yeah. in the game for a long time. Also, that. you've got to go to Bob's Pizzeria as well. I've been there. I've been there. That's got fantastic music as well. <laughs> it's, it's not um, as good as you remember. Yeah. The, 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 the convenience store's got the best music. Easy. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, I've been watching your stream, listen to music. It definitely brought me back. I mean, how many have you bought me like cassettes? Yeah, to listen to. No, I've collected like two or three cassettes, yeah. but I've, I've I, like, you know, there's I've one called like Hipty Hop, I think, which I love. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> I, just, I've, I, the music I love going into the bar to... and changing the jukebox, like changing <laughs> the music on the jukebox because it's completely set. Like there was one that I walked into some bar and it was like some real somber music, and there was a guy at the bar looking down in like into his hands as if to say my life's a wreck, and the barman was like, "Oh, not now, mate." You know, and I thought, oh, this is a really depressing bar. So I changed the music on the jukebox. It's like real upbeat sort of jazzy number. And I was like, <laughs> that's completely changed the whole oh, come feeling on, guys. of the scene. <laughs> yeah. I, tell you what, I, did, I also liked it when you, you know, you went to that travel agency and that woman was having none of it and was trying to get you to leave. And she was just like incredibly oh, yeah, that, rude that was on you. stream. That was yeah. on stream two or three, I think. Was it? Uh, you've only watched know. the first one, haven't you? Well, I don't know. They all blur into one a bit. I've watched bits and pieces. Brilliant. Brilliant. I've <laughs> watched every single Live. second of every one. Uh, but yeah, no, she was just like having a go at you and it was pretty funny. Just, <laughs> my, last, my last point is um, I do find this dis- discussion quite interesting because, I mean, you've, you've accepted like the, the flaws that I've pointed out. Yeah. You know, you, they're in the game, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. And... But despite all that, you you just enjoyed it, didn't you? <laughs> well, that's the thing. But it's because mm. that came out in 1999. Of course, whereas, the writing whereas... the writing was bad. Well, it um, came out in but, 1999. But you can overlook whereas... that. You could you just find the bits that you enjoy. And of course, there was yeah. some racial bit that was a bit controversial. But no, that just ignore you that. You can't. You can't You've compare it. it. No, no, you can't compare this with Detroit because Detroit can't. came out this year. Whereas what's it called? <laughs> like Shemu came out 20 <laughs> years ago. What it's called? <laughs> you, 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 oh no, I've thrown him and I <laughs> you're him off. Um, but you, you I mean, compare you were comparing Detroit to Fahrenheit, I think. 
Yeah, because that's that's exactly the point I'm making. David Cage has not evolved since Fahrenheit. It'd be like if that. okay, if Shamu three comes out and it's as bad as the first Shamu, then yeah, you're absolutely right about that. But if it's if they've evolved and got any better at all, then they've still done better than David Cage. But you're still able to overlook the flaws and enjoy the game. Back in 1999, yes, not in <laughs> not like in 2018. Yeah, but now you're going. Actually, what you'll find is that the Chinese people did all know each other back then, and uh, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> What about the what about the guy that says Mon? Forget about that. Uh, Don't say forget else. about that. I said it's terrible. But you're, I mean, <laughs> there's that, also Dave, there's a I massive. Spent all the money on visuals, not voice. Yeah. <laughs> they no. The thing is, right? You're gonna. There's a massive plot hole as well between the first and the second game that you'll <laughs> you'll probably notice, which is a big oh, problem. But plot holes yeah. are bad holes. Like, I mean, come on, James. You, I mean, you, this is the David Cage of your uh, of it's your really life, not, isn't it? Though, your because gaming. that's the whole. That's not the point, though, is it? Because this came out in 1999. <laughs> Detroit came out in 2018, and it's still yeah. no better than Fahrenheit was in terms of dialogue. I don't know. I don't know that. It's not. Still terrible. Still the same beats. Still the same stories. I, thought, I mean, I thought, I thought, I thought Detroit, was, Detroit was shit, but... Um, <laughs> exactly. It's, it's just funny winding you up, because it is essentially the same argument. It's not, but go on. <laughs> so you just liked it? Just like what? Come on, we can, how can I debate with that, James? How can I, I, I just, debate I just, with I just, it? No, because I can give you specific reasons why I liked it. Not like <laughs> okay. Matt, who just said, I liked it. Dave, you know when you were like, James, why would you think I would like, pretend not to like it just to wind you up? There you go. This yeah. is why. Oh, yeah, good point. <laughs> um, right, okay. Uh, my, my, uh, my streams will continue. Follow uh, at Computer Game Pod, and we will be announcing the stream. Sorry, it's like short notice and sometimes at weird times, but it's just whenever I can get on. Um, but but, but uh, if you don't watch them live, they're all available on our YouTube like the next day. So just search. I've, 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 I've loved YouTube. I've loved streaming this. I've never liked streaming. I've never been comfortable with it. I've never enjoyed it. But um, uh, the streams that I've done of this game, I've had so much fun with it. Um, and it's really helpful to just have someone there to go. This is where you're supposed to go next. Now I've sort of stopped people a few times from telling me exactly where to go next all the time because I want to, you know, find my way to some extent. But there are moments where I'm like, oh, fuck, what am I supposed to do? Um, and they were just telling me. So that that that's helpful. But a lot of fun. I mean, I've genuinely, I, I, I've I've really really enjoyed my time with it so far. I I, I hope it lasts. I genuinely like. I really hope it lasts because. Part of that fear is that the irritations I have with the game are going to get bigger the longer it goes on. But um, uh, I'm hopeful that that's not going to happen, and I'm going to keep keep to that sort of same level of enthusiasm. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I watched drop. your first. So I watched your first stream, Dave, uh, live, and, I, and I, the, the the bit of the cat was just like I had tears down my down my face. It was amazing. <laughs> I've, I've watched others so on YouTube because I haven't been able to watch it live, but yeah, it's just uh, it made me want to go back and play the game. Death, death Poor Shy Smile was like, I found it really funny, but I don't understand why he was laughing at the dead cat. And it wasn't <laughs> I wasn't laughing at the dead cat. I was laughing at the the sort of weird like dialogue where it was going, we buried the d- cat. And now I can be the cat's mummy. And it was just <laughs> like, what? This is either laying it on way too thick or the translation is just a bit off tonally. Like, and it just <laughs> sent me, sent me off on one. Fucking well funny. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Big in Shenmue. Who'd have thought? Um, I'm looking forward to getting back on it again. Definitely. Uh, right. Okay. And that's all, all I've really got. Matt, do you want to take over? So I played a bit more Guacamelee too. I mentioned it last week, but, um, Again, quite unlike me, I've gone back to you know to to mop up some stuff. I, I I think I'll go back here and there. It's it's still it's still a fantastic game, and I absolutely love it. But I this week I've been playing Yoku's Island Express, which I managed to finish. That's a good game, isn't it? It is a very good game. Yeah, um, I won't go into too much detail because obviously you guys have talked about it uh, to death. No, but... I want to hear what you think of it. Yeah, I mean, but basically it's, it's just a, it's just it's like the most charming game I've played in such a long such a long time so it's a I mean, would you describe this as like a metroidvania it is basically yeah, right yeah but, totally yeah yeah, yeah. yeah but, but, it's, but it, it, it just so it's a metroidvania where you are yoku and you base i mean well what the story the story is a bit all over the place so essentially you land on this island you I think now you take the place of the postmaster about the story i think you get a little bit more about the story after the story finishes so basically you land on an island that was looked after no there were, there was an island that was looked after by three gods um and then they got attacked by the god slayer 
and one of the gods escaped and uh, set up a new island um, for people to live on. Um, but then the god slows back and is now attacking that god. Um, and the idea is is that you have to try and uh, summon chiefs or whatever. I can't remember the word. Yeah, chiefs, yeah. Uh, yeah, but you have to summon these four chiefs to come and cast a spell on the god to revive him um, and then attack back against the god slayer. Uh, that's basically it. And you're, you play Yaku, who's this little beetle that's been sent to just do work like you're a postman on this island yeah. uh, because the, the last postman quit and then you get wrapped up in this uh, in this story, basically. Yeah, it's just it's just incredibly charming for for more like the creatures you meet along the way, the writing, like the the, the music is really joyful. Uh, um, obviously, one of the big deals about this game is that there's many parts of the game where you're basically navigating the environment using on these like mini like pinball tables, basically. And there's actually way more pinball than than I than I was led to believe, or that, that, that I assumed, given uh, what I heard about it. Uh, there's actually loads, and I, but I, I love those. I love those those little scenes where you're, where, where you're sort of you know using the bumpers and and, and whatnot to, you know to unlock various parts of this small little environment. That, that it does some into. clever stuff with it, doesn't it? Here and there. Yeah, I was actually expecting. So obviously, I've recently played Guacamelee Two and like Celeste earlier in the year, and I was expecting it to take that to go maybe as difficult as they were. But I, I'm actually quite thankful that they didn't. That they that, that they didn't because there was definitely opportunity for them to use a lot more, say, of like the pinball flippers and other stuff to make it really difficult in the latter stages. But thankfully, they've I, I mean, they've kept it at not quite as pace. So that's not really that's not really the case. Yeah, I mean, it does. It does. I mean, the the comparison to Nintendo games that we've spoken about, James, in the past, when you start trying to mop up the collectibles and stuff like that, there is some tough stuff in there, definitely. Mm -hmm. I think it it felt that it needed to save that for, you know, once people had completed the game rather than... Which I think is a great... You know, I always like that. Um, There's no need to go... I mean, you know, it works for some games, but there's no real need to go extremely hard while you're trying to get through the story. If you want to do that extremely hard stuff, it's it's after. Yeah, I finished the game and I only had like I finished it with fifty nine percent, so I've got loads still, loads still to do. I think I swear to God, there's like another skill that I haven't even earned yet. Uh, I'm fairly uh, sure. There's yeah, there is. There's kind. There's probably two, not skills, but you can improve skills. Uh, I think you yeah. can improve all your skills. I, I basically, I, I, I swear that there must be some sort of double jump or like uh, basically a, a big jump of a jump of some sorts because there's loads of things where I can't find a way up, and I assume I'm missing a skill there. Uh, there's loads of little bits I've got to collect. And Possibly. I, do you know that you can direct? Because this got me as well. Do you know that you can direct which way the you explode with the slugs? That I exp- that what do you mean I explode this? I mean, obviously you find the slugs and then you can like you you move yourself Vacuum to like them. blow up areas. But how, how do you mean yeah, you direct s- yourself? You can you position where the slug is on the ball and then blow it up, and so you can actually control the direction that you're you're flying off in. I oh, really okay. No, I wasn't yeah. aware of that. That's 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 but, but, there from but the start. Every time but you it say you like, pick up a slug and, gra- and go on your ball, it's, it's pretty. It's it's. It's not random, but you basically go up to it and hold down like L L R or whatever it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you you hold down the thing, but then where that slug is on your ball when you press the button to make it blow up, that you can control that what direction you fly off oh, into, that's and that's like a that opens up a hell of a lot of what you're talking about right now. Oh, okay. And right, suddenly cool. you realise that you can control jumps. Uh, where you've never been able to before. Uh, yeah, yeah, so that's a good tip. But yeah, I mean, I, like, 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 like I said, I really was expecting it to, to get really hard. It didn't, and I was really thankful for that. It was just, it was just a really pleasant, pleasant sort of uh, journey. Really, at first, I wasn't a huge fan of actually traversing the map, and and that's, and it just felt like I need to get here, but I wasn't 100 percent sure, and I wasn't a huge fan of the map itself. Like actually, like, navigating, you can't like yeah, zoom in and out great. as easy. Yeah. Or again, I think Celeste and um, Guacamole that did that really well, so I was used to that. But yeah, I think the map isn't great, but I, I absolutely loved opening up those sort of those uh, those. Uh, the B line, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The B line, you basically, like, I think it's a like hundred. You, you basically spend a hundred drop points, or whatever, to open these things, which basically fling you around the map, and there's like a whole sort of track, really. Yeah, it's really satisfying. Just, just you know, get, getting on those. It, I, I love the sort of mini story lines that you sort of pick up as you go to different parts of the map, where you go to like this, this you know, snowy area and other stuff. And I love the little story lines that are sort of hit, uh, you know, hit, uh, hidden at first because you don't, you're not even sure what's going to be around the corner, and then when you 
and meet the various characters and they ask you to do certain tasks and they send you a different direction i thought well, that was just so uh, so so beautifully written i just thought it was, it was, a, it was really just a, a, such a joy whereas games recently i played like celeste and, and guacamelee I'm, I'm much more stressful much more difficult much more about you know make sure your button presses are, 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 right, are right on the money to, to make sure you, you complete a certain section there's a bit of stress in that this is just stress-free really enjoyable and i definitely recommend it to to, to anyone who, who hasn't already played it it's really short as well it's like well it must be i guess 10 hours but um because I, I i only played like a little bit this week and um my clock on the switch was like five hours and i was like well it would be good if i got this finished before the pod on monday and yeah i got it done last night obviously that's just that's just the first attempt um and now i'm going to go back and sort of mop up other stuff but um yeah i love the way it looks as well and the, the music is is gorgeous oh god the music throughout is fucking fantastic yeah. like you were talking about the beeline the beeline music is just so good that that do, 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 like that sort of jazzy sort of feeling to it is great the the theme tune at the start when the game's loading up you know everything about it oozes class you know yeah um and i yeah i just i it's just as we've said we and you know I've, we've already said today like that sort of nintendo feeling don't come from nowhere like it just feels that they've put so much effort into everything uh within the game that you know the only literally the only thing that bugged me was the slight bit of slowdown if you use the um the beeline too quickly sometimes there's a bit of slowdown or it needs to load in an area um that sort of got to me a bit but the rest of it is just yeah i mean it's just wonderful wonderful yeah, game it really is and uh, the word wonderful it can't really be used to describe a lot of games with this yet yeah, it's yeah it's just it's like comfort food it's just really it's just a lovely thing to play and yeah i, I love playing it so I'm, I'm i'm glad you guys recommended it and i i, I got on it and uh yeah great and uh, yeah uh, like i said just that and guacamole too and uh yeah, but I'm it's one, of those, it's this... one of those rare games, Matt, where um, where you d- like can totally see a sequel, and oh yeah, it there's, there's feel... absolutely going to be a sequel for this. I can't. I, yeah, must and be. you d- you're looking at it, and you're going, actually, I could do a sequel to this. Like usually, you're kind of like, no, leave it as it is, or whatever. But I'm thinking, no, man, I can totally see them expanding on this in so many ways. I, I, I I'll be really, really excited when a sequel gets announced for it, which yeah. I'm pretty sure it will do. Oh yeah, it's done I'll, I'll, well. I'll be very, very surprised. But yeah, look, this is quite a lot. Me, I'm actually like finishing games. I mean, like, in the last few weeks, I've done like Guacamole, this, I've done like, Celeste, like a few we- recent, uh, a few weeks ago. This is very much, very, very, very unlike me to actually finish games. Uh, but I'm <laughs> actually quite enjoying it. A medal, please. That would be great. Not getting a medal. The Witcher Three next, Matt. Yeah, <laughs> no. Well, I, I, you want to play the, the Witcher 3, didn't you, There's James? an amazing PSVR game looking forward to next week. Um, called Fi- It's got the most generic name of all time. But anyway, it's called like Firewall Zero Hour. And it's basically like, from what I've seen, it's like Rainbow Six, but in VR. And then Spider-Man's out soon. So there's, you know, the games are coming. Well, this is it, isn't it? I mean, I was saying to you the other day, Matt, like um, on email, that the, the, this has been the driest summer of, of, like for a long time. It's been dry well, as okay. fuck this summer. Um, and uh, I'm so glad now that we're entering that point where actually games are coming out and it's all going to be pretty exciting. The, the, I mean, I mentioned on Twitter, I've, I'm still playing Overcooked 2 um, because we're having so much fun with it. Like, Joe and I and Harry, like, Joe doesn't play games, but she's she's been loving, like, she's been suggesting that we play it and <laughs> Harry's absolutely loved loves playing it with us and it, it's just hilarious hearing a four-year-old going mum serve it up <laughs> <laughs> I, I love all that stuff well, we definitely um, need to do a stream of all four of us playing that i mean i'm bang i'm so bang yeah, up for definitely. that i can't even tell you so, but, I, um, played, I played that today with the with like chen and the kids as well and it's just asher was just he just spent the whole time chucking tomatoes at everyone <laughs> he just wasn't interested at all in playing the game he's just like picking up the vegetables and just chucking them at people it was yeah he really um, wet himself when Joe tried to throw him some chicken over to another <laughs> raft and uh, she threw it straight in the in the river. <laughs> and he was just, he thought that was fucking hilarious. <laughs> like, no, mum. Um, but no, what I was getting to was that you, the, all these games coming out, um, we watched a trailer of uh, uh, Mario Party uh, mm. today. I think it was like a Gamescom, it was like a 30 minute thing. I just thought, do you know what? Like, Mario Party gets a bad rap, but. We would fucking love that. Like mm. just the, the the three of us sitting down and playing that uh, on a Sunday afternoon just sounds so good to me. Um, so I'm quite like I'm probably going to pick that up now. The uh, thing about it's like yeah, you know, we've had like a bit of a drought, and then there's some you know, games are coming now. Like, I really want to play Hollow Knight, but 
because and everyone's raving about it and it looks great and I, I, I will get it and play it sometime but also I'm like well there's loads of games coming and I know this game isn't going to be up for like game of the year consideration so I sort of think well, I, yeah, yeah, like I still want to have that hours. argument but we'll see well let's have the argument mm. well we've, so, we've got a question about it um, okay we'll come to it then yeah, okay. shall we yeah alright fine um, is that it Matt I guess it yeah uh, Sean uh, Hollow Knight <laughs> <laughs> right, so promise that uh, outside of the question we got about this is, I think this is the last time I'm going to talk about it. Um, so remember last week I was saying, so I've got to the the final final boss and it's really hard. So I was like, no, I'll wait for the DLC to come out. That'll add some stuff that I can, you know, improve my guy with, and then I can tackle the final boss again. Turns out the new DLC is just loads of harder boss fights that unlock more proper final endings. <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 thanks. Yeah, so I'm just <laughs> like, do you know what? I like, I you know, forty hours in, and I have fucking loved ninety eight percent of it. Um, I think I'm just gonna have to stop playing it. Like, that's all right, isn't it? It is. I think, I, yeah. Um, it, like, it's one of those things where it's like, oh yeah, like I'm not the like as much as I've loved this, I don't think I'm the target audience because obviously they've you know they've put more DLC out and it's just like. Yeah, it's, it's fucking nightmarishly hard. Enjoy that. It's like every boss in the game, but you have to do them again, but they're harder this time. <laughs> um, and then there's like there's a couple of like challenge rooms you have to do where you fight like ten bosses in a row or whatever. And I'm just like, no, this is not like I I enjoyed the bosses, but not to this extent. Like um, <laughs> so yeah, so I think I'm I'm free now. I play other games. Which is nice. It's kind of disappointing, though, because that reminds me yeah. of my feeling towards um, uh, Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Uh, but when they announced the DLC for that, and it was like, now, welcome to really hard combat areas. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, but that's that. not what I liked about yeah, that yeah, game. Yeah. Like, it's such a shame. Yeah, just wanted to carry um, on exploring and just, yeah. yeah. But, um, so yeah, like, I still I fucking love it, like, overall. But yeah, it's sort of, I've had to just go, like, right, I need to just stop. Because it's, like, been my, like, my default game for, like, the last month as well. Like, I'm still, like, getting, you know, taking the Switch out of the dock and just loading up Hollow Knight being like, no, I'm not, I'm not playing Hollow Knight anymore. Stop it. <laughs> um, so that's been weird. Um, uh, yeah, but good news is I've, I've played other stuff. Um, so there's one James and I have both played, but I'll save that till the end. Um, I put a bit more time into Bomber Crew. Fuck me, that gets stressful. Um, <laughs> what? I just, uh, just the amount of things you have to manage just like when you because you your ships like starts getting like properly shot up and stuff and you're having to like make sure you your guys heal themselves and repair the the ship and yeah i mean i don't know you know i mentioned the controls are a bit annoying like i don't know how much of it is like me genuinely not being able to keep track of what's going on and how much is me just being like for fuck no select him no move him there did um I don't know. I feel like I'm not really getting used to it, but then maybe, you know, that sort of havoc is where the game wants you to be. That You know, that sort of constant sense of panic. Um, so, yeah, so still enjoying that. I think, like, that's been a nice one to just sort of go back to and chip into occasionally, although I think maybe I need to actually dedicate some time to it so that I do get used to the controls. Maybe part of the problem is that I'm just sort of dipping in and out, but who knows. Um, I played, I tried to play a game called One-Eyed Kutk, <laughs> Which, um, again, this was on the Switch. This was in the that summer sale, and it was like £2 or something, and it had some nice artworks. So I was like, yeah, I'll give that a go. It's like a point-and-click adventure, um, and it tries to do the whole, aha, there is no language in this game. It's all just icons and stuff. Except the icons are really difficult to read. Like, you go to the oh, options... No. Yeah, you go to the options menu, and it's like there's buttons there. It's like, I don't know what these are doing. I don't know what <laughs> I don't know what options I'm changing, and then you go into the actual game, and it's like, so yes, yeah, so it's like a point and click adventure. This guy crashes his spaceship, and then you've got to find parts for it. But it was just really tedious. So like, he'd sort of so the guy'd be stood on this planet, and then you'd like icons would appear above him, one pointing left, one pointing right. So then you click mm. like the right one, and then he walks a bit to the right, and then there's nothing. So you click right again, and then he walks another bit to the right, and then oh, there's an item. Pick up the item. Okay, now go left. Now go left again. Now go left again. I, I just, uh, yeah, no, thank you. Um, I think like there are point and click games with like no threat or like barely any puzzles that have been quite enjoyable. Um, and I think playing something like this reminds you of how like that isn't easy to get right. Like, <laughs> um, 
Like, did you ever play? Uh, was it Axel and Pixel on the Xbox 360? Anyone? I've never heard of that. Yeah. The name rings a bell, but I, I haven't played it. It was just like that was a point and click adventure, but it was like I think technically there were puzzles, but basically you could just sort of keep clicking on stuff, and eventually they pretty much solve themselves. But that was really pleasant. Like it was just so nicely put together, and it didn't frustrate you at any point. Um, whereas this is like they've tried to do something like that, but it's actually just kind of annoying. Um, so that was a shame. Uh, I've been playing Bad North, oh, which good. is this. Yeah, this game looked great when it was first announced. And, yeah, uh, um, and then it yeah just magically. That, that's came what out. my dad calls leads. <laughs> <laughs> <Go on. laughs> um, uh, yeah, so it's this real time strategy game, which normally not my thing, um, but it's sort of it's rogue like. So every stage is like generated randomly. Each stage is just like a little island, and there'll be like some houses on it. And then you have like a couple of little squads of guys, and then you you know you make them sort of run around, and boats are sort of coming at the island, like invaders are coming in, and you've got to position your guys to try and fend off the attackers. And there's all you know, there's different types of units with a sort of paper scissors stone relationship. There's like archers, warriors, and spearmen, um, and like yeah, like initially it's like ah oh, fuck, this is this is great like because like i say i I normally don't have the patience or the skill for real-time strategy games but this is so like it's so simplified but everything works just how you would expect it to (laughs) like you sort of look at it and it's like okay there's a ship coming in i've got some archers and i've got some warriors so i guess i put more warriors on the beach and then i'll put my archers on the cliff above and i guess that'll work and it does like you know the archers like before the ship even comes in the archers are already pelting the ship um with arrows and then when it arrives on the beach the sword you know swordsmen sort of finish them off and you're like right cool that's pretty much what i thought would happen and then when you get like warriors and spearmen you sort of go okay so if i i can see the the like the area that the ship's going to land in so i guess i'll put like warriors at the back and then spearmen either side of it so that when the guys land on the shore the warriors keep them busy and the spearmen just sort of flank them and poke the shit out of them from the side yeah, so you're actually like you're actually applying some strategy to yeah. position of your your soldiers yeah but it, and it just sort of feels like it's like this really sort of fluid sort of common sense like okay i think this sort of looks like it makes sense and it does like you know even though the units are like your control over them is quite limited you tell them where to go and then they pretty much decide what to do beyond that but it all works. You never like, you know, you're not sort of ordering a unit around and it's like, no, fucking, why are you attacking them? You're supposed to be attacking him or whatever. Like it all just clicks really nicely. Um, and then, you know, as, as you progress, you sort of, you earn money and then you spend it on your units and improve them and give them, you know, new abilities and stuff. Um, however, within like one game, like one complete game, so it's like, it's like a roguelike, so each level is randomly generated and you just kind of, you're working your way across this map um sort of you know getting new commanders which give you a new squad so you can have up to four at any one time um it gets really samey um like quite quickly um like yeah all the levels are randomly generated but they're pretty much like i don't know at no point was i like right fuck hang on this is completely different like i had maybe one level that was very flat and i had to be really careful about where i put my arches and stuff um but yeah, it, it started to get a bit boring, and then it just got really hard, like to the point that, like, it was just really stressful because it, it wasn't getting more interesting; it was just getting more. It, it, there was just more enemies coming at me, at, you know, any one time, um, to the point that it just sort of became, or I felt it became unmanageable, and like. Yeah, you can level up your guys and you can give them abilities and stuff, but there's literally, for each class, there is one special ability they can get. And they, then you can equip, like, an item which gives them, like, another special effect of some sort. But, like, within my first playthrough, I was getting multiples of the same items. Like, there's just not that many. So it's not like... Like, something like with XCOM, when you're leveling your guys up, every time they level up, you can pick, like, one of two abilities. So even if you have two units that are, like, broadly the same class, they can specialize in different ways. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's not really any of that. Like, pretty much, you just need one squad of each type, and you, you're you pretty much set. Um, And, yeah, and then I, so I finished, like, so I ended up dying. Um, I don't know, like, must have been about three, four hours in. And it was like, right, game over. Seven, you know, apparently I made, made it 70% of the way across the map and I've no desire to go back um, yeah, so it sounds like it's really got like sort of no, no no it's nothing really compelling to actually make you want to play it sounds like yeah. I'll do this I'll, that worked out and then you just carry on until you die 
pretty much. It looks so gorgeous as well. It does. Like it, it looks beautiful. And like I say, like as someone who doesn't really like generally like real time strategy games, it is beautiful the way it's put together and just feels so natural and just logical. Like, um, like it just makes sense. Um, but then yeah, there's just I don't know, just not enough to it over several hours. Mm. Um, so what, do, do, do you reckon there's need to like increase the complexity of the end game or? give uh, like m- more upgrades more tools more i think yeah like do. just a bit more breadth to what you can do with each of your, your units like because as i say there's pretty much so you level them up and then they get one extra ability and then you can equip an item but like i say there's not that many items to equip the items are just things like um oh, like a war hammer that you can smash a square with and it knocks all the units back or um like it increases the number of guys in the squad or whatever so they're not nothing like groundbreaking um so yeah yeah, it's a shame like it's so close like there's so many good things about it but just yeah over time it just gets a bit stale unfortunately what's performance like so i've seen some tweets saying that the the, they're aware of it switch performance issues and whatnot. no really uh not that i'd noticed um no it seemed seemed fine as far as i'm aware Um, but i I suppose it's not the sort of game where if there was like a bit of slowdown you'd be too bothered anyway because it's sort of a strategy game but um yeah it's a shame um yeah, damn, damn shame it just mm. looked even like the most recent like indie thing where it was showing off and i like, and i think that was showing off at rez yeah yeah. Cool. yeah 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 um where was i right yeah last game um which james has also been playing i know james you've been waiting a couple of weeks for me to finish this yeah. so we could talk about it uh, it's 1979 revolution black friday um the one i mentioned a couple of weeks back uh, which is a sort of telltale style um adventure game but centered around the iranian revolution in 1979 um which i, I think i mentioned like because my uh my wife's half iranian her dad like was in the the shah's army and was sort of there when this all kicked off um which he's never really spoken to me about like he's kind of I mean, I think even if you tried to, he's often quite incomprehensible anyway. But um, but it's been really interesting, like knowing that this game exists and finally getting to play it and sort of getting a bit of an insight as to what he might have been through. Um, I mean, James, what do you make of it? Yeah, I mean, the the telltale style of it thing. I mean, that's a bit of an oversell. I think cause it's not. <laughs> it's not really, is it? I mean, this, this... it definitely wants to be <laughs> like it's... it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely does want to have that, and it wants to have like multiple like option choices for like you know for dialogue and stuff like that. But mm. it doesn't really like yeah. it doesn't really happen. It's, <laughs> I mean, it has it has like fail states as well, like whereby you know if you yeah you, know, you you can the game can end like quite quickly mm. if you make the wrong decisions, which is kind of something that adventure games are kind of tried to go away from. But yeah. it makes total sense in this case because <laughs> in some of the cases, like some of the things you do, probably would end up. In a in a fail state of of death, yeah. which is pretty, <laughs> which is pretty, which is pretty terrible. Yeah. But I mean, overall, I mean, I I although this is a it's, it's a very I was saying to Sean, it's a very sort of like janky game, yeah. like in terms of you know it, it look doesn't look great. It I mean on the, I played. Did you play on Switch? Sean? I did, yeah. Because I did you. I mean, I found it 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 was like you know stuttering. Yeah, this, performance like, isn't good. And like if you look at um, the trailers for it, like it's had a visual downgrade as well. Like the lighting's been stripped out, like in yeah. a lot of ways, and lower textures and uh, low quality textures, stuff like that. I but, mean, yeah. all of that stuff. It doesn't look that great. It doesn't run that well. But I still really enjoyed playing it mm. because, and it was it's one of those games where it. I was saying before when we were when we were chatting about it like in WhatsApp it's it's one of those games which is it shows to me what could be done actually I think yeah. more with looking at like historical events and things like that that mm-hmm. there is a possibility here for like video games to explore this kind of stuff in a really interesting way and I just felt I really wish that they had more money like yeah. to make this game because it could have been a lot more than it is but what it is is still great mm. like I if you, I mean, if you again, it's like you know, if you enjoy narrative games, this is something to look at. But particularly if you're interested in like in any aspects of like history, because mm. I mean, there's so many parts of this that I found fascinating because it really sort of like the similarities with like Chinese Revolution as well, with like mm. the fact that you've got all these like competing groups that are actually all want change, they all want things like to be different, but they've all got different motivations, and ultimately, what gets replaced with you know what's what comes next is maybe not significantly better than what was there before, yeah. and. It's 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 fascinating. I, mean, I yeah, I, I found it a very. It's quite, I wouldn't say it was like a gripping experience because there are. 
I mean, the dialogue isn't isn't that great in places, but it's still it's still pretty well to put together. I think the yeah, like the the voice actors do a pretty good job. I think considering yeah, the, yeah considering what they were working with, um, mm-hmm. I think there's a yeah, there's a lot of honesty in it. Um, but yeah, like as you say, the sort of the whole thing that like the new regime that they got after the revolution probably wasn't much better, and I'm glad that it totally goes in with that viewpoint like a like because mm-hmm. looking at the trailers it's like yeah you're part of the revolution and it, you know that's cool and i was like is this really going to tell us so easy to rewrite the history wouldn't it yeah like are they just gonna <laughs> like is the story just going to be that you take part in the revolution and it and you win and good well done game over um <laughs> yeah. But, um but yeah it's it's like you know it's a lot more nuanced than that in fact the only yeah. the only like you know, group that is pretty much made out to be a villain and quite rightly is is america and to an extent great britain as well because yeah. <laughs> like you know iran gets stick for being an islamic republic but guess who made them want to be an islamic republic guys yeah. it was us <laughs> like because we were totally just you know just meddling with it and taking all the oil and stuff um and yeah so like yeah, so it plays out kind of like a telltale game and you're walking around looking at, you know, items of interest. Um, but also the the main hook is that you're a photojournalist um in Tehran while this this um you know, these protests are going on and stuff. And there are these sequences where you're taking pictures. Um which they kind of <laughs> They make it like they a don't really work. Yeah, it's they? like a mini <laughs> game where, like, oh yeah, you're using an old camera, so you got to focus it properly. But the focus is just going like way all to one side, way to the other side, and you've just got to click the shutter button at the right time when it's in the middle, which is not how cameras work. <laughs> I, I, I never felt I really nailed that either. Yeah, like, well, I wasn't, I wasn't really, wasn't really sure what difference it made either. Like. It didn't really, yeah. I don't think. Mate, I'd it's... be all over photography of cameras and like that. <laughs> if the lens was just going crazy and you were just like, right now! Just a quick time event. Um, but, uh, yeah. Of course, these days you just press the screen where you want it to focus, right, Sean? Yeah, pretty much. Unless, yeah, you, unless you want to do it manually. If you want to do it properly. That's photography. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so the, but the hook is that, yeah, so when you take uh, photographs of like certain points of interest, um, you get like... Like, it's not sort of shoved in your face. It just sort of tells you you've unlocked a thing. Um, and basically, yeah, so the, what you've just taken a picture of, there'll be a real-world actual photograph um, from yeah. the time. Um, and you sort of, you know, it's interesting comparing the two. And there'll be a bit of text oh, just explaining. Cool. And it's it's really interesting. It's really nicely done. Um, yeah, I, I spent ages afterwards actually just going through all those notebooks. Yeah. You know, there's like a notebook and it has all of those and you can like read through it. And then I was like, okay, I, I want to look this up and see mm. more about this because it's, it's fascinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Um, and like, it, you know, and it was, it was nice for me because obviously having like some Iranian family, I've sort of, you know, got involved with like, you know, annual traditions like Seize the Bedar, which is their sort of kind of their new year celebration but it was sort of celebration of spring starting and there's like there's a section in the game where you're looking through like old family videos mm-hmm. and he, like you know and there's this one he glow like you know puts it on and he's like oh yeah this is this is this will be seized to bed our celebrations so i'm like yeah, i've done that <laughs> um, so that was you know, things like that were really nice um yeah it's the the main problem with it as you know as james says aside from the jankiness is that it feels like it's like the first episode of something bigger. Like it ends on a cliff, like, like a total cliffhanger. Um, and the whole, like it does the whole, you know, whenever you make a decision, it's like, oh, so-and-so will remember that. Up until the final scene where there's there's no more game after after that. You know, like <laughs> you make the final decision. It's like, oh, Hussein will remember that. It's like, no, he won't, because the game's only about another 10 seconds long <laughs> and there's no more decisions to I be loved, made. <laughs> I loved what they did that in Telltale mm. uh, in the first season of Walking Dead, mm. where it was like, Kara will remember that, and then like two minutes later she gets shot in the head. And it's like, <laughs> but, like, <laughs> yeah. but back then that sort of felt like a cool sort of red herring because yeah, you're like, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm making these decisions and it's having an impact on it. Um, it's like, well, actually, no, anyone could die at any point. But this was literally the end of the game, and there's, mm. <laughs> there's no, there's no more of it. Like it, it feels like, yeah. So not only does it feel like you know, like you're not sure if there's supposed to be another episode or not feels a bit like maybe the developers weren't sure if there was going to be another episode or not either because it's kind of like yeah it, f- it feels like it's supposed to carry over to a, yeah another, it sort of yeah, ends chapter. on such a you know a total cliffhanger with no resolution whatsoever but also like it fast forwards through loads of events really quickly and it's like yeah it's hard to tell if they had it planned out over several episodes yeah. or what 
Um, mm. But yeah, and, and as James said, the, you know, you make all these choices. There's literally, I think, only one choice that actually affects which ending you get. Um, it's just kind I of mean, a shame. Also, I mean, if, one of the other problems that you've got, like if you're if you're adapting something like this from like real world sources and stuff, is mm. that it's less likely you're going to get like a satisfactory conclusion often either because True. there isn't one like, yeah, often yeah, in many yeah. cases with this and that that is also like I think it, that's a significant problem with with this because mm. well we got to get we, we got to get used to that stuff the more challenging subjects that gaming yeah. uh, takes on mm. the more we've got to realise that there ain't always a good ending yeah, yeah. you know what I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's a problem that we've always had and that was one of the major complaints with. Um, I know there were other complaints, but one of the main complaints with uh, the end of Mass Effect 3 was that mm. well, th- there was no good ending. Like All the <laughs> mm-hmm. endings were shit like, in terms of <laughs> yeah, what yeah. happens to the characters that you've grown to love. But, uh, yeah, I it was mean, just like there are, there are better and worse endings depending on your take on yeah. the, the Artistically, world. Artistically, a bad ending can be a good ending. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the way yeah, to look at. I mean, I, you're right there, Sean. One of, one of the things I really did like about this was the way that they didn't kind of like paint any sides as being like great. Yeah, you know, it was it was just like these are people trying to make decisions, mm-hmm. and maybe they're not making great ones, but because of the situation, it's it's difficult, you know, to know which way to jump. Because yeah, it's like never, um, you know. like Ali, the uh, Mujahideen guy, who's like. So he's the one who's like, oh, you know, these protests are great, but let's probably start getting violent now. Um, yeah. And yeah, and he explains, he's like, well, my dad was tortured in prison and killed for ages. And you're like, yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd probably be quite upset, actually, if that was, <laughs> yeah. that was my situation. Um, and the whole, the interesting thing, like the situation with your own dad, who is a supporter of the Shah, but like, but he's also like, look, mate, I was there in the 50s when we put the Shah in power, and I understand what it's like to be in this situation where it's like we could affect some change here and we can improve things. Um, so that was interesting as well. Um, so yeah, it's like broadly, I would recommend it just with a lot of caveats. Like, yeah, um, like it, I'm so glad it exists and it's like legitimately educational, but without like it doesn't have to break the flow of the game. Like you can just play through it and then read the stuff afterwards if you want. Mm-hmm. Um, it reminds me a lot of uh, remember Never Alone the Eskimo one, um, mm-hmm. and that sort of aimed to be educational, but I found that was just a fucking pain in the ass to play. Oh, I remember you talking about that. Yeah, yeah. I was really disappointed. Um, whereas this is like, you know, you, you can just get through it and take it in and then absorb the educational stuff either during or afterwards yeah, didn't, as you didn't see. Didn't that fit. just like, like ram in uh, documentary clips yeah, like, yeah. between levels and yeah, stuff? Yeah, which was interesting, but yeah, a bit, I don't know. Yeah, this is really like you can do as much or as little as you want with that mm. and you can just sort of follow the main story or just yeah, ignore all that stuff you want. But yeah. I wouldn't do that because it's really good. Yeah. Like the way it's presented I thought was great. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely um, worth I I just wish like I, I What did you both play on? A uh, Switch. Switch, yeah. Right, okay. But yeah. it's like, I, I just checked it's been on like uh, iPhone since like twenty sixteen. So yeah, it's been out for a while, everything. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I just I mean, made the, it to the Switch, yeah. Yeah, it kinda looks like that as well. Like it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> it does, but, uh, but there's just there's just so much you could do with this stuff, you know, like yeah. with other situations. I mean, I always just think back to like you know what I study and everything, and just what mm-hmm. you could do something amazing with this, but you can't because it'd never be it'd be so difficult to like get off the ground or whatever for someone to develop it. It's just yeah, ah, no mind. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, I mean, good. I think I mentioned the um, when this came, first came out, the developers had to go into hiding for a bit because they yeah. start getting all sorts of threats and stuff. Um. See yeah. that that was the other thing that I found like in terms of parallels I found really interesting because you know mm. there was all those like the speeches from like the from Khomeini and everything oh, that yeah, they yeah. were like they have all that and it's like how there's like you know him prior to the revolution and then like interpretations of what he said and there's so many parallels with that with like other revolutions of like mm-hmm. you know what the the person the leader has said and then how later on that gets kind of forgotten or kind of like airbrushed over as yeah like, like he does that whole thing, thing doesn't he it's like i don't want to be in charge guys i want to yeah <laughs> i want you to have a democracy and oh the shah's gone i guess i'm in charge now whoops <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. It's yeah. Like I've I've no ambitions for power at all. Yeah. You know, it's uh, I just it's just yeah. It's it's fascinating. I, yeah, yeah it's really... pure pure Boris. Mm. Um, <laughs> right, is that is that the end of your? Uh, is that, that is that is everything? That right, is the sure. end of me. Yeah, James, you got got anything for us? Yeah, I've only got really quick hits though because I've not really played a lot this week. I mean, I've played Captain Toad, um, which I've owned for quite a long time, but didn't only just got around to playing. 
I finished the main story books from it, and I just started the the bonus levels. I kind of done those as well. I'm, I did enjoy it, but there's a couple of things which I'm not so happy about. I mean, you know, there's the Mario Odyssey stuff that they've added to it, and yeah. it's really disappointingly short, like to the point where it's like about three, I think about two, two or three levels, and they're just really short as well. They're like they're over and done. It was a shame because I was playing it um like with my son. And I finished like the main storybook stuff, and then at the end they have like a little like thing where you see the Odyssey like fly across, and he just like was so excited. He was like, "We're going to get to go and see like all the stuff from you know from that." And it's like, "No, nah, it's just a couple of levels, and they're really short, which is not so good." But um, there's also some really sure. like annoying UI choices as well with the way the game plays if you're playing it in. Um, What's it called in in docked mode? Whereby if you land, if you like walk onto certain platforms where you can like rotate, you because what you do is you like you go onto a platform and it's got like a sort of a, a steering wheel on it, and then you can use that to rotate like parts of the stage. But every single time you do this, it like it goes on it and then it flashes up this massive wheel on the screen, like overlays like the the whole screen, and then you have to like <laughs> and it and then with an instruction on how to use it, and it's like this happens like whenever you do it and it's really irritating because by the end of the game sometimes like you really need to like do things with precision because it starts to get quite tough and it's like this fucking overlay gets in the way and you can't see what's going on and it's just really really irritating and it was you know i, I didn't enjoy that so much that sounds fucking terrible <laughs> yeah it's, <laughs> that is, it's that the most not nintendo is it it's the most un nintendo thing i've ever seen like it's it's just it's just so big like i can't i don't know why they just made this overlay so massive and then <laughs> with like then with this like i mean i took a picture of it i'll tweet it later and it's just it's just huge and yeah i mean and also i mean i did find that some i mean i i went through the game i haven't got everything like by a long shot at all because it starts to get a bit annoying, like gathering the stuff because some of the levels are like really like. There's one where you have to like have all four. You you like collect four of the like the toads, and then you have to like guide them all through this level. And it's like if one of them dies, you know you're done. You got to start all over again, and it just gets so frustrating because it's like often like you die through no fault of your own, you know, because one of them just decides to wander off a platform when they shouldn't have done and, you know, that kind of thing. And it's, it's uh, what's really annoying about this is this is making the game sound bad and it's not. It's a, it's a, it's a good game. It's a solid game. But it's just, I don't know, I, I didn't enjoy it as much as I was hoping I was going to and I just want a re-release of Mario 3D World on yeah, the Switch real. is what I'd really for want. But real. But it's still... Aren't they... Re- so did I dream this? Have they announced that they're re-releasing um, New Super Mario Bros? Well, see that I'd I'd heard what? the same thing that they were going to re-release New Super Mario Bros. U, like the one that came out for the Wii U. Like there was some rumor yeah. about that, but I don't know if that's going to happen or Is not. Is that a game rumor I'm... or what? Like recently? I don't know. Where did Probably you see a it, couple of weeks ago. I'm I'm pretty sure I got this information from you because oh. I was like, why the fuck would they do that instead of New Super Mario? Uh, in, instead of um. Mario 3D World. It makes no sense. Yeah, this, okay, this is on IGN. It's, um, yeah, IGN just said, yeah, New Super Mario Bros. U is reportedly coming to the Switch. All right. It's going to be like a, a deluxe version that will include, like, Luigi stuff, presumably, as well. Is, and, it, um, is that game worth playing or not? Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very good 2D game. Mario game. Yeah, yeah, it's, but... it's a very good, like, 2D Mario game. But still, 3D World is the one that would be fantastic to have again. Yeah. It's um, such a good game. Yeah, that game is the business. Although saying that, like I think I said to you at the time, I'd rather them just do a new 3D game. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, it just uh, yeah. Well, yeah, definitely. But you know, if you're just gonna, if they're gonna keep, if they're gonna start putting out these Wii U games, then I'd rather at least they chose like you know the really good ones. Yeah, it's yeah, like, makes sense. Yeah, but, yeah. But, but how totally difficult could it make? Just just use the same fucking game as 3D World, just all new levels. How difficult can it make? Knock it up in a week, can't you? Uh, we just want to play that fucking good game. All right, okay, yeah, sorry. So I played that. The other thing I played is Everybody's Golf um, on PS4. It's a great game. It is, because, you see, I'm not really into golf games usually, but I wanted something that was kind of a bit relaxing in between FIFA releases, so <laughs> I got this. <laughs> and um, you know, as we were recording, I just sold my copy of FIFA 19, uh, so I'm, I'm quite happy about that. Which FIFA copy? 19? You got oh, it sorry, already, sorry, yeah? FIFA 18, sorry. Well, yeah, which uh, copy though, James? It, the PS4 one. It's, uh, yeah, it's the only so one you've got. still got right. your Switch one? Uh, I've got a download copy of that, but yeah. It's... <laughs> can't oh, get rid of it. That's the only way. 
<laughs> but yeah, I mean, this. But so far, this has fit the bill perfectly for what I wanted, though. I mean, each I've found like the nine hole. I mean, I've only played it in single player, but like the nine hole rounds are just about like the right length and that kind of thing. It doesn't feel ridiculously hard. I mean, have you played? You played it online, haven't you? You two? Yeah, online. Online's fine. The, the The biggest problem with online is that um, it takes all your clubs and stuff over with you, which give you a clear advantage. Yeah, yeah, so it never feels fair. It, yeah. yeah, it never feels fair. Okay, um, but you do get to go around yeah, together in a golf cart, so that is true. Yeah, I have an that's true. Yeah, and that is a yeah. <laughs> Um Yeah, no, I mean the single player though is, is fucking fantastic. It's so good. The only the only issue that I have with the single player is that it really, really forces you to play the same courses over yeah. and over again, which I understand because it's kind of like you got to learn them, you mm-hmm. got to improve them. But that's that's part and parcel of golf. Like you learn the courses like the back of your hand and you improve not through skill but through knowledge of what what you know where's best to shoot and you know it, you you learn the actual mechanics of the golf a lot easier by repeating the same um courses again but it took the piss with that a little bit it was like it took ages to unlock new courses in that game mm-hmm. but yeah but, i mean my only issue is it's not on a handheld platform like, I love the previous ones on Vita. Obviously, Vita's not around anymore, but... See, I only ever played them on, on PlayStation. Like, I I played World Tour and then this, and... Yeah, I, I only played them on, uh, you know, home consoles rather than portable. So, mm-hmm. like, yeah, I never played the Mario Golf to... games. Were the Mario Golf games anything like a sort of standard... A standard round of golf players, or was it much more like Mario... Like, the most recent tennis game? But it's not really tennis, it's just a Mario <laughs> version. I want, like... Everybody's golf on Switch, basically, but didn't have like super shit in it, did it? I don't think Mario. You blue shelled it into the hole. Oh, did you? Oh, no, oh, I, right, okay. no, no, I'm oh, joking. Right, okay. I, I, I've never played either of them, um, but no, I've heard nothing but good things, and that, that that's a comparison people make when they talk about everybody's golf. But I think uh, this everybody's golf completely surpassed. Yeah, it's so know, good. So good. That that is the that is the sort of cartoony version of golf to play. Mm. Yeah, I will still keep playing this because, yeah, as I said, really enjoying it. And the yeah, only it's other... really, really good. Uh, uh, the only other thing I played <laughs> okay. is um, is Yakuza Kiwami Two, um, which Kate, which is out now, and um, I've only just started it. I haven't really got anything to say about it, but I do wish. I kind of wish that they'd stagger these releases a bit more because it, it is insane how many is. like Yakuza games have come out in the last like year or so. Yeah, because I've only just finished. I only finished six like. Uh, how long ago? Like a couple of months ago, and they, because like the games, they're obviously they they take quite a time to finish, and there's quite like a lot of time and like emotional investment into them. And it, I don't know. I just wish there was a bit more of a break, you know, between them because it's you know it's. I, I mean, mean, it suits system... me because it means I'm going to get them all on sale. Because I... <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so I, got, yeah. I got Zero and Kiwami for like fifteen, twenty quid each, um, mm-hmm. and then by the time I'm through them, Kiwami Two is going to be a fiver. Um, so it's working out pretty good for me, but yeah, there's. I think they have possibly. It just uh, feels like it. It feels like I've been playing like one of these every couple of months for the last two <laughs> years. You know, it's like it. It. I really love them, honestly, mm. but it just does feel a bit like I just would lit a bit of a break. Would Did be you nice, play any of these games first time round, or have you? No. Only... Okay, no, uh, I was just, wondering whether you're going to like catch up with yourself and like, okay, I've actually no. played this twice now. <laughs> See, they've also... I mean, this should be the last one for a while, though, because apparently they are going to do 3, 4, and 5, but that's yeah. not going to be for a while yet. I mean, I'd imagine that'd be next year mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, but, but, um, but for a while means, what, like two weeks, four weeks? Probably, yeah. Probably <laughs> yeah, by, yeah, by the end of the yeah. year, by the end of the year, yeah. And they'll probably knock out 7 as well by the beginning of next year. It's, um, I don't know. It's But no, I'm, I just I need more time with it before I can say anything about it. I mean, the systems are really similar to Kiwami. Um, it still looks fantastic but i can't comment on anything else really because i'm played enough but yeah. are you still playing playing yakuza uh sean uh no but just because i've had so much else that's on it. i am looking forward to yeah, okay that's it you're never going back to I it i'm going back to it no you're not no you're not it is gash <laughs> i win right <laughs> and people say he's not baiting me it's like <laughs> ugh. i genuinely did not like that right okay are we done yep then we should do some emails and tweets. Yeah. And we've got to do emails and tweets this time because we fobbed it off last <laughs> we week. Did, we did a couple, uh, didn't we? It but, is yeah. really late, though. So can we not do oh, any of them? So it is. Uh, all right, I'll, <laughs> I'll filter a couple out. Um, okay, so David Trapmore says, I've been watching Sean's updates on Twitter as he makes, a, makes his way through, through to the final secret boss of Hollow Knight. As of writing this email, I don't think he's beaten it yet. 
good luck. I've heard he is a right bastard. Bear in mind, you sent this email a week ago, and yeah, no change. Um, <laughs> the, the fourth <laughs> and probably final update to the game comes out this week on Thursday, adding more bosses, areas, charms, etc. I've been holding off on fighting this final boss because of the new update, as I want to leave it as the final thing I do in the game. Bad news, mate, it's not the final boss anymore. <laughs> With lots of talk of games being on and off your plate recently, what's your opinion on this kind of regular updates, adding more content to a game that you might have considered off your plate? Do you feel the need to return, uh, or are the developers sneaking the game back onto your plate while you're not watching? Um, I, yeah, I see what you're saying. Mm. I mean, I, I could see that becoming irritating uh, for certain types of games. Um, I, I, I mean, I don't know the context of what that feels like in Hollow Knight. Mm. I certainly didn't. It certainly didn't bother me uh, with Dark Souls. I mean, you, you you get people that go, no, you have to do the uh, yeah. DLC, and I was kind of like, actually, no, I was all right, not bothering to be honest with <laughs> and you. And it's it's worse in Dark Souls as well because if you finish the game, then you've got to play through half of it again just to oh, get yeah. to the DLC bit. Yeah, so, just to get. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, like Mass Effect, um, the DLC bits for that, I found like so with the first game. So when the first DLC bit came out, I bought it and played it, and was like. Uh, that was all right but because i was like i was so excited to go back to mass effect that i was i was properly jazzed about it so to find out that it was like a two-hour bit just wasn't that interesting so in mass effect 2 i got all the dlc but then did like another full playthrough with the dlc added and just but just having that dlc as just like parts of the story felt a lot better than like (laughs) Putting all this, you know, this expectation yeah, but then it's on kind it of like it. that's encouraging you to say, "Don't buy it day one." Well, yeah, wait until yeah, the wait DLC until it's all out, and then, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, like certainly, I wouldn't have the time to just be like, "Oh, I'll just play through all of a Mass Effect game uh, game again," because um, that's that's not going to happen these days. Um, so yeah, um, and, and as I said, I was in a similar position with Hollow Knight, where I was like, Do "You know what? I'll just wait till the new DLC is out, and then." Then I'll finish it, but actually I've taken a look at the DLC and gone, actually, no, I'm done. Um, so yeah, it's a weird one. Anyone else? Uh, anyone else? I mean, I mean for me, I, I feel like I'm constantly battling about, you know, to, to play enough games, uh, especially when it comes to what, the, end of the, year, in the game of the year discussion, I probably don't play enough games. So mm. if a game comes out and it's had a massive update to a game I've already gone through, I just often I, I can't do it right now i'll wait till like because there's like a quiet period maybe mm. in january or maybe this entire summer um so no i often don't go back to it unless i there's a real desperate need or if if the if the dlc or whatever is, is getting rated really really highly then maybe i'll maybe i'll find time but generally i, I, I have to move on yeah, yeah yeah i did i did love that with mass effect though especially with mass effect 2 because it felt like the way it treated it still see was you played the game, and here is like a little—I don't know—it was like a special episode of a, a really long-running series that you yeah. loved. You know what I mean? It's kind of like here's a wacky—not a wacky scenario. It's just kind of <laughs> like a like like you've watched a series of films, and then there was this little like feature that they did. Cause what, yeah, because one of the um, Mass Effect Two ones was like a sort of James Bond type adventure wasn't it it's like you went to a dinner yeah. party and you had your fucking suit on and stuff and yeah that was, yeah, no, that, was that was the, that was a good episode yeah 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 that was, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean that, was that the one where you fight yourself oh shit i don't know maybe don't remember that oh uh, then maybe not maybe not maybe that was that was the one because uh, do you remember i told you one was like a um a comic relief episode of <laughs> <laughs> mass effect like they just did comic relief um yeah that 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 was pretty good the bond one that was the major one. I can't remember the name of it now. Hmm. Um, but yeah, it introduced a, a shitload of stuff. New enemies, new weapon types and stuff. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. good. Love that shit. Yeah, uh, right. Adam Staff said, I've just taken Odyssey off my plate. Fuck that 500 moon challenge. And I need recommendations for a new Switch game. I have Hollow Knight, Zelda, Captain Toad and a few more indie bits. Uh, never had a Wii U. Did have a PS4. Favourite game ever is The Witness. Had to uninstall Rocket League because I was taking it too seriously. <laughs> Um, so Spl- so yeah, that happens. Yeah, so Splatoon, Arms, Wolfenstein, Mario Kart, Labo, Bayonetta, Dead Cells, something else. Um, I mean, all of those. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in there. Well, I mean, There's... Splatoon, Splatoon Two is great, but um, yeah, probably not essential. I mean, at this would point. you find a group of mates to play it with yeah. again? Uh, probably not. Uh, it's kind of hard to get into at this yep. point. Um, I mean, Mario Kart. If you've not played Mario Kart, then Jesus oh, Christ, get yeah, that yeah. game. It says, it says he never had a Wii U. So yeah, Mario Kart and Bayonetta are both. 
dead. So worth getting. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, Bayonet is so yeah, good. Bayonet is probably an easier sell because Mario Kart is kind of like you know what you're getting. Yeah, you are literally just doing those um, those Grand Prix, and uh, like I wouldn't have played it as much as I have done if it wasn't for my son. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I mean it's still a cracking yeah. game. But yeah, the Bayonet area is like straight up brilliant yeah, yeah. throughout. If you've not played that, then get on that definitely. Yeah. If it's into it's a good I mean, I, I can't believe none of us have played Dead Cells. It's definitely on my list. I've been thinking about it, but after like Hollow Knight, I just thought I, I need <laughs> That's a break the thing. from this. Like, you know, am I going to do yet another Metroidvania? Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, like uh, Matt and I have been really enjoying the Banner Saga. I still need to go back to oh, Banner God, Saga yeah. too. That's that's a belter. I do definitely need to do that. Yeah. Uh, there's, go on, sorry. Yeah, there's there's so much stuff that's like like indie stuff. I mean, there's like there's Golf Story. There's mm-hmm. like Blossom Tales. Mm-hmm. You know, I really thought that was brilliant. Really enjoyed that. Is he isn't got has he got Yoku's like Island? Not uh, he's not think. mentioned it, no. Yes, that's another one. Detention I thought was brilliant. Mm. I enjoyed that a lot. Oh fuck. Uh if you liked the witness, uh Gorogoa. G O G G O R O G O A. <laughs> Gorogoa. Um is fucking amazing. Just really interesting perspective based puzzles. Um yeah. Fucking very smart game. Um Night, Night in the Woods. Yeah. yeah that's, shit. that's another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Stardew Valley. If you never so played that, it's got a YouTube app though on on, uh, on the <laughs> Switch, isn't it? Mm. Da, 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 da. Get off, my sister. <laughs> right. What's the next one? Uh, and arms. And arms. But yeah, go on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. People still fucking love arms. I don't know if you know it's. It's a good game. Yeah, I've, really good I game. Never... I've, not, I've not noticed, Sean. I've not noticed. <laughs> go on. Liz Walker uh, says, Hi guys, I uh, thought I'd managed to break my World of Warcraft addiction as I hadn't renewed my subscription and hadn't even pre ordered Battle for Azeroth. Uh, however, after seeing Warbringer's YouTube videos, I ended up getting sucked right back in because uh, I love the lore so much. I bought the game a month sub and even listened to the audiobook of the prelude novel, which I really enjoyed. I feel like Blizzard have done a great job at cultivating the lore and ongoing story of their franchises through a variety of media outside of the games themselves, which keeps people engaged in their games. See also the Overwatch story cinematics. Do you think there are any other companies doing similar stuff in lots of different mediums rather than just advertising for one game in that moment? I've never got into stuff like this. Oh, yeah, Microsoft yeah. really tried this with Halo yeah. like, in a big way. They had like novel yeah, tie-ins, books, they had yeah. like comics, they had like yeah, yeah, the, the, whole, the whole thing, like car- TV shows. The, the cartoon yeah. series, didn't they? The yeah. They tried to do an animatrix mm-hmm. with it where they did like a load of different episodes from different people, I think, didn't they? Um mm. But I don't know, I've never Yeah, it's not something I've ever really engaged with. And I don't think like certainly in terms no. of like game developers and publishers, yeah, I don't think anyone else really does it quite the way blizzard do um and people love it so i'm surprised i mean uh, yeah it doesn't happen more eh. it's a risk though isn't it i, I mean guess, it's yeah. several different projects based on uh, like if the game doesn't sell when it's shit then you've got all this planning and work just mm. down the pan yeah. hasn't it happened There's... the other way do you remember do you remember the matrix where <laughs> it was like no before you go and see the third matrix film you've got to play the game <laughs> otherwise you won't understand what's going on and it's like that was all bullshit, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, pretty much. Joe, I'm just thinking, The Elder Scrolls has got. There's got to be books for that because that's like yeah, you know, yeah. like from Skyrim and stuff. Probably. Actually, there are. I've just had a look. There's, <laughs> yeah, there's. Yeah, I don't, I don't <laughs> there's tell you mean turn around and look at your bookshelf? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I think that one of the reasons I've never really delved into this stuff is like if I'm playing a game where I have a character who has some sort of agency and I get to make decisions and affect things what interest would I have in then watching a film or reading a book or whatever, which is just me just, you know, me just having it fed to me. Like to me, that's, I don't know. That throws me off. I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Like if I was watching, uh, no, that's a bad example. I was going to say the walking dead then, but the <laughs> walking dead story based on the game. Yeah. Like, and then and Lee did then this. And I, no, he didn't. was forced oh, yeah, yeah. to shoot his own <laughs> yeah. son. <laughs> I'd be like, no, <laughs> that's the James's choice. I don't have to watch this. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're saying. I know what you're yeah. chatting, dude. Uh, right. Right, okay. Next Mike, <laughs> he says it is actually Mike Pettit. Mike. Not, not yeah, Petit. Yeah, I'll nurse out of the end. <laughs> now we know. Now we know. Um, so yeah, this is another Hollow Knight one. Uh, it says, right, lads, I need a quick word about a video game. A few weeks ago, due to the incessant harping on of one Mr. Farley of Canterbury, I picked up Hollow Knight on Switch. <laughs> After initially quite enjoying it, I've realised that it is in fact a belter, a corker, a bit of a bloody masterpiece. Seriously, Dave, Matt, get on it. 
Uh, the reason I've emailed in is that it's been mentioned that due to a PC release that nobody played coming out last year, Hollow Knight won't be eligible for this year's Game of the Year show. Now, I understand this rule for releases that people went through in the past that have been ported to the Switch. Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze obviously can't be on the list despite being similarly brilliant, but none of the panel even talked about Hollow Knight last year, and it's clear that it's been in the top games James and Sean have played in 2018. I mean, listen to Farley talk about it. He gets that excited little bubble in his voice he gets when talking about Mario Odyssey or Animal Crossing or the dirty cinemas in Yakuza. It's clearly an all-timer, and it's a shame it won't go into discussion slash vote because it had a PC release that none of the pod even mentioned last year. But that's, yeah. I don't know. I, I think he's got a point. I think it should be in the list. He has got a point. He I has got, got a point. point. But, but these, are, I mean, these are the rules that we set. What? Well, hold on. You do think he has got a point. Didn't you vehemently rage against yeah, Matt? super hot VR. For- that was different for reasons I can't remember at this particular moment. <laughs> it, it was, I agree with Sean. It came out on PC, didn't it, the year before? <laughs> yeah, and no one had played it on PC. Um, and we didn't talk about yeah. it. Ah, fuck. Come right, no, Super fine. Hot VR was never going to be Game of the Year anyway. <laughs> this, oh, well, what, this so it's fine if the game is, is, is you know, is it's one that you like, one you like. Yeah, but basically. Otherwise, yeah, bullshit. Yeah. No, I'd, I'd, forgot, I'd no, forgotten I mean, about the Super Hot thing. It's a shame for the game, though. though. Yeah. It's a shame for the game because everyone's talking about it and no one talked about it last year. Like on other yeah. podcasts, like tons of people. I mean, I know Giant Bomb did this like thing on their Game of the Year show where they have like best game you're still playing from last year. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be that's gonna be Hollow Knight definitely because everyone's playing it this year. Everyone's loving it, and talking about it. Loads of people are saying how incredible it is. But mm. yeah. I think it's more impressive. So the version that came out last year, yeah. that is exactly the same as one that's out on consoles now. It's no, it was, it was worse because there, when it came out on the Switch, there were th- was it three free DLC packs, and we've now just had the fourth. Yeah, um, yeah which is more, really interesting because you like obviously so playing it on the Switch. There's so much about the game you take for granted, and then when you look at what was added in the DLC, it's like oh shit! So like these entire bits of the game just weren't there previously. Um, so that was interesting, but um, yeah. but no, but what I'm saying hmm. is that if the game came out. Last year on PC, yeah. what I find really interesting, I guess, is the word that we're using, <laughs> um, is that the, 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 there was no buzz about it, mm. and now it's out on these consoles. Suddenly it's like blown well, up. Well, it's only out like, on it's Switch. Crazy. It's not out on anything else yet, is it? I don't think. It's coming, oh, it's really? coming to PS4 soon, um, but yeah, it's not, it's not yet. Yeah. So, um, sure. yeah, it's purely been a, a Switch thing, as far as I can tell. Yeah, and it's just taken off based on that remix. Yeah, yeah. God, that that must have blown their minds. Yeah. The people that made this, they must have thought, "Oh, we release this game, let's stick it out on Switch or whatever." Yeah. And suddenly, like people have just gone crazy. Yeah, for yeah, it. yeah. That's yeah, mad. Good yeah, fucking what game. Are we doing? Uh, I, well, no, it's not included. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd forgotten about the super part thing. So if we've yeah, we've we've set that as a rule. We've then. already set that rule yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. What can you do? What can you do? Yeah. Uh, right, tweets. If you want to send us a tweet, do so at Computer Game Pod on Twitter. Uh, Luke Summerhays says, Is the reason that the computer game show has never had a female guest that you're worried that your wives will see tweets about it and think you're cheating? <laughs> so this <laughs> is... <laughs> no, this is the ninja thing. This is thing, the ninja yeah. thing. Um, for those who missed it, big famous streamer ninja said he doesn't stream with women because apparently he gets accused of having affairs with them. Um, but he also said it's because he's like it's it's a toxic chat and he just want to put that on them. And that's yeah, also what he said. Maybe. Yeah, but they have to, no, the women have to put up with that anyway, though. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah it, it wasn't literally about that. It was a, it was it was a toxic chat that would try and make something that wasn't there. Yeah. And I don't want my wife reading or hearing about any of that shit. Right, I have to deal mm. with it. Yeah, initially. Initially, I was going, we'll change that then. You're one of the biggest streamers ever. Like, you've got the ability mm, to change that. That's, that's where but I also, am. also, I knew if I was in that situation and Joe was reading stuff, I mean, it's complicated, isn't it? I mean, it's easy to just go, fucking hell, what are you doing? And slag off Ninja or whatever. But part of me thinks, actually, like, if I was literally putting myself in that situation, I wouldn't my wife to, want my wife to read that shit either. So it's kind of like, I see what he's getting mm. at, um, and maybe I shouldn't. You know, maybe I'm wrong for saying that. But like, I, th- that was my initial thought. My initial thought was, mate, you got the ability to change this. What's the matter with you? Um, but then I thought, actually, putting myself in that scenario, it would be very uncomfortable for me in my private. I suppose, yeah. Like um, we don't know his... life. And at the end of the day, as as bad as this sounds or whatever, mm. I give a fuck way more about my wife than I do about 
anyone else on the internet. Yeah. Do you know fair. what I mean? Like, I don't, don't, <laughs> regardless of, you know, whatever, yeah. she comes first. So, yeah. I, you know, yeah, but, whatever. We don't know what his relationship is like. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, uh, it's to, to answer the question, no, it's just that we're awful men. Um, <laughs> well, it's we, we've not, asked women it's, on, right? I, That's, we, yeah, we've yeah, tried. It, uh, several <laughs> times. Yep. Yeah. Several yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we've always been uh, turned down. So, and that's fine. I'm not you can't get angry at them for turning us yeah. down. Um, Just saying, yeah, no, it's we, their and, fault, not us. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is that, that is I've what you're got, saying. <laughs> I've, I've got literally no problem with um, having female guests yeah. or, or, or anyone, as long as they're you know, there's a certain style of person that we want. You know, people yeah. that can. Uh, take a ribbon and give it. I wouldn't want someone coming on here and feeling uncomfortable yeah. with the way that we talk to each other. That that you know, I don't want to put anyone in that situation. But there have been uh, female presenters that I've heard on other podcasts that I'm like, yes, I'm definitely inviting them yeah. on, and, and they've always turned us down. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's never worked yeah. out. It's never yeah. worked out, which is a shame. All uh, right, Athene says, uh, assume EA have confirmed Escape Four. What awful thing have they done to ruin it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was mean, thinking about this the other day. Like, the, mm. basically, I can totally see him saying, "Well, you, you can't unless you unless you basically it will definitely be about followers. I can guarantee that Escape Game will be about <laughs> getting enough followers, just like yeah. you know, the, got the, that. The yeah, that is literally it, isn't it? It's that you, yeah, because yeah, you social media integrated. Yeah, the cameras now like someone's on Instagram doing like Instagram live or something, and it's you got to have enough followers. If you don't, you can't do like a pop shove it. I, I can imagine <laughs> that sort. <of> <laughs> See, I was thinking you can't do a pop shove it until you purchase 48 <laughs> skate bit ball bearings <laughs> <laughs> and exchange them for, <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you see what I mean? But yeah, that, 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 the transition, masters, because, so stop being creepy. because the game is always... Shigeru Moto 2018. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, the the followers thing is perfect because the game has always been about filming things and putting the footage online, but, like, for a laugh. So to suddenly be like, right, no, now there's a fucking number attached to it and you've got to hit a certain number or else you've fucking... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you also, you know that also they wouldn't let you export the stuff to YouTube or whatever. It'd be whatever sort of proprietary oh, thing yeah, that yeah, they've yeah. made up that doesn't work properly <laughs> yeah. and is awful. EA Skate <laughs> Network. Yeah. Tube. That was, it, that was tube. Tube. To EA Instagram. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> it will blow up. I just imagine we, we've built just, our own streaming network. That's it'll be something which like that, one day know. we can turn just, off, and you won't be able to use yeah, it yeah. anymore. <laughs> just as you complete the game, it comes up. You've gone viral. <laughs> Congratulations <laughs> on our system. Oh, <laughs> Uh, right, Stan Shaw <laughs> says, Evening team, the show used to be available on Podbean on a Tuesday evening. I'm not complaining, but I am wondering if this is a timetabling issue or a deliberate decision. Either way, happy to get what I'm given. I'm just the kind of person to ask such a thing. Love the show. So I thought you are complaining. Yeah, that's there. what I thought. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's um, because we are no longer hosted by Spong. Mm. Um, what we used to happen is that we uploaded it to Podbean and then Spong would take that and put it on the main feed. But now uh, we've gone independent uh, as such. We, we uh, When we upload it to Podbean, that automatically uploads it to the main feed. So instead of releasing it... Um, I mean, I'll be honest with you. If it was me running it, like that side of things, then we'd just release it on a Tuesday night. Like When the, when the show's ready, it'll be out. But well, well, that, we can do like, engagement and stuff... <laughs> If you want to... No, you said you wanted to keep the lunchtime. Well, oh, just because that's what people are used to, and I'd rather do it in the middle of the day. So... Oh, can we not do this discussion again? <laughs> We've already had this in the WhatsApp for ages. It's like, it Have doesn't we? matter. Have we? Have yeah, just like... Ugh, just... yeah, but I haven't had this discussion in the WhatsApp. <laughs> I mean, look, Matt, you know better than I do. This is where I step aside and say Matt knows what he's doing. I'd so do I'm, it in the middle I'm, of the day, my not opinion's really invalid. Like half ten at night, you know. But, I mean, I would just say, just give it to him, but it's, it's up to Matt, and I don't care. I'm not going to change their rules because of Stan Saw, right? <laughs> Move on. Kurt Lewin. He knows that. Kurt Lewin says, what's next for Quantic Dream? I can't see Sony Ooh. wanting the bad press associated with the studio now, so will they go multi-platform or something else? No, of course not. It's sold really care. well. They do enough. It's just going to yeah. continue. Yeah, yeah. No one's it's going to continue. Yeah, it sold, it, it sold a ridiculous amount yeah. of copies. Yeah. There, will, there will be think... another... Cage is not gone. Yeah, it's definitely Cage not. Most not normal gone. people. What he comes up with next? Most normal people never even heard about the bad shit in the studio, and even if they did, yeah. they've probably forgotten by now. Such is P 
people. Um, right, Alex uh, says you have to choose between the two, these two devs and lose the other and all of their previous games forever. He's done a list. This is horrible. I don't want to do this. I do. It's just Come impossible. Good. Right. All of them are impossible. Naughty Dog or Rockstar? I mean, for me, I... Well, I don't get what we're doing. So we have to choose one. You've got to choose, choose, choose one to one keep another. and you lose the other, including all their previous games. Oh, fucking hell, that's easy. Yeah, yeah, same. Definitely, yeah. Same. Uh, right, Capcom or Ubisoft? Capcom. Capcom. Uh, yeah, I think it. Capcom or Ubi? Yeah, Capcom's yeah, got, yeah. got a history. Uh, Bethesda or Bioware? Bioware for me. I keep Bethesda. Bethesda. Really? Yeah. Mass yeah. Effect, mate. Doom. No, sorry, by, by, we're, we're keeping Bioware. Oh, right, you keep it. Doom, keep Wolfenstein, Bioware. all of that stuff. That's fine. <laughs> Mass Effect. <laughs> Mass Effect's dead. It's, it's not coming back. It it's might, finished. It might one day. It will come That's, back. And I'm holding on to that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're going. I mean, Bioware's if probably go, not going to exist for much longer anyway. Mass Effect. So it's a proper know. one. Yeah. Uh, Nintendo or Sega? Sega, move on. Nintendo. <laughs> Nintendo. Yeah, Nintendo. Matt, you wouldn't <laughs> itch. No. <laughs> I can't turn my back on those boys. <laughs> You're not being serious. You turned your back on them ages ago. You don't <laughs> have anything play, from them You again. play no Sega games, like ever. I don't know what this has come from. Well, because I actually loved the Saturn and the Dreamcast and the Mega Drive. Yeah, that's but where it came so from. that was years ago, Matt. I, I, I still love them. Don't and then we talk about the games and then find out you haven't played any of them. It's like, <laughs> it's insane. Oh, look, let's not get into this again. I love them. <laughs> All right. right, Stuart Baker, last one. Uh, Stuart Baker says, what gaming item do you regret selling or getting rid of and what item do you regret buying? I regret selling everything. We've had this a few times. I've never I've never regretted buying anything, I don't think. I'm sure I must have. Can't think what, though. Like, I always regretted buying um, third-party controllers <laughs> yeah. like back in the yeah. day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's standard. You always, always regret that. You think... But it's fifteen quid cheaper, and then you get it, and you're like, "Fucking hell, this <laughs> is why awful, <laughs> like awful." Yeah. Um, I regretted buying a Voodoo Three graphics card just as 3D effects went bust. <laughs> that was that was terrible. Uh, that was a lot of money, Belter. and uh, yeah, I was stuck with third party drivers for ages. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it was terrible. Uh, I mean, in hindsight, I like it now. I shouldn't have paid full whack for No Man's Sky at release, should I? <laughs> No, <laughs> no, you it shouldn't. Bad, it? I think the closest to answer I can give to this is probably my PS4 Pro. Really? I think, I think I should have got an Xbox One mm-hmm. X rather than a PS4 Pro. And here's why: the jump between the PS4 and the PS4 Pro is quite minuscule. I play both both systems, mm-hmm. right? The jump between PS4 and PS4 Pro is it's not massive. The jump between the original Xbox One and the Xbox One X is huge. Yes, it's it. almost generational. <laughs> also, one of the main reasons why I wanted a PS4 Pro is because I wanted to play on a... Like, I, I assumed it was quiet, and it's not. And that is becoming more of an issue. Mm. Like, I am... Sean, I am genuinely tempted to buy Red Dead Redemption yeah. 2 yeah. on the Xbox One <clears throat> rather than the PS4 <clears throat> Pro yeah. because... The advantages of having it on the PS4 mm-hmm. Pro is the full scale up, uh, the 4K upscale, and playing it with cool friends. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, but I think I'd rather have the lower resolution and not have a fucking wind just turbine. Just put in some my fucking, fucking front headphones room. on. Like, I, I don't get this at all. I, I just... don't always like playing with headphones. Sometimes I like just kicking back and playing. And even then, but sound quality like, is better. It's when like, there's a quiet, mm. there's when there's a quiet bit of the game, you're still like even with headphones on, you're still hearing. <laughs> <laughs> just, just not not with a pair annoying. of Beats, Dave. You don't get that. Keep it's Be- it who do you up. think you are? <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> It's so funny when he turns up with his beats <laughs> on. Uh, yeah. I mean, have you not looked into all the thermal paste stuff? You did it for your previous I have one, looked didn't you? into it. I, I have looked into it. I mean, for starters, it's still within warranty. So if I crack yeah, it open, whack thermal paste fuck in it, that, that. that all goes to yeah. fuck. Um, so, no, I'm not doing that. Um, and I've, yeah, I've, I mean, I cleaned out my, I haven't pe- cleaned out my PS4 Pro, but I've cleaned out my PS4 and it made fuck all difference. <laughs> People are just like, yeah, get rid of the dust, mate. No, it doesn't. It will last for about a day, but it's a little bit quieter. Um, yeah, I I can't stand that consoles make that much noise. Uh, I wish I had an Xbox One X, and it's killing me that I haven't got one at this point. Because if I had an Xbox One X, that's what I'd be buying Red Dead on. And uh, right now, I'm sort of torn between the two. 
In terms of regretting getting rid of stuff, I don't think I ever have. No, I don't think I have either. Bollocks, I did. Because I always agonise over getting rid of game stuff. Like, oh, I might want to play it again one day. No, I won't. No, I won't. Get rid. I don't give it's fuck it. I, I've regretted losing a Wendan. I can't find a Wendan. Oh, I've shit. got the box. I can't find the original yeah. cart. And I would like to fire that up at yeah, some man. point again because timeless. Classic. But yeah. uh yeah, no, I was See, like that. I had a big like GameCube collection, like with all like the Resident Evil games that came out and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, I got rid of all that stuff and I really regretted it. I mean I needed the money because I was doing trips to China and I didn't have any cash and I sold it all for for like plane tickets and I I sometimes kind of regret that. I mean, you know, I ended up getting married because of it, but it's still, <laughs> you know, <laughs> still, still, kind of <laughs> still, still kind of regret that. Still, still kind of regret that. On your wedding day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was here. It was a choice whether be here or play the original Resident <laughs> Evil collection <laughs> on my GameCube. And uh, I'll be honest, kind of, kind of want to be playing Resident <laughs> yeah, Evil. They, right they now. were good games. You know, I, I lost all of that stuff. Mm. It's uh, no mind. It's fine. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. Never mind. Uh, but yeah, that's it. That's, that's it. it. Cool, Matt. What do people do on the internet this week? Um, I mean, again, all our links to everything's in the show notes. Just like look, look at the podcast description. It's linked to our social media and stuff there. Again, we're doing a show at EGX. Get tickets for a Saturday. You just need a standard day ticket, and you can come watch us at five o'clock on the twenty second of September. And we're doing a meet afterwards at the Wellington Real Ale Pub in Birmingham. Be yeah, there. Boy. And uh, we will see you next week. Thank you for living it. Uh, We'll catch you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye. Tired. Fucking 12 o'clock. What is this shit? Dirty David, turn up. Dirty David, turn up. Dirty David. Broke a string. Well, that's the end of that.